Hello, I'm Dan McDowell, longtime professional broadcaster. Why subscribe to our Patreon podcast? Well, perhaps you support our struggle to get out from under the oppressive thumb of the man. Or objectively, if you sign up at patreon.com slash the dumb zone, you'll get the two episodes per week that are available on all podcast platforms like this one, plus an additional two episodes each week that are exclusive to Patreon. So subscribing on Patreon gets you four episodes per week. Oh my, what a bargain. Now, on to today's program. The Dumb Zone. The, dumb zone. the, dumb zone. the Astros have got to be thrilled. You know, you go through spring training, it's one thing. Only one start last year, and tonight for Brad Peacock, start number 69 in his career. Nice. And it's been a good one so far. And look at that, and he's at 69 pitches in start number 69. Very nice. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I never listen. I'm gonna listen. I wanna listen to the dumb song. Happy opening day. We're at opening day. Well, we're not at the game or anything. We're outside. We're in a bus. We certainly are. Like a literal bus, not like an RV. Yeah. A bus. Yeah. It's incredible. Uh, what memories we must have just sitting in these seats when Blake was opening the window to put the wire, like just to push them together and then pull it up. And- yeah. I think, you remember when uh, John Stossel used to go to hotel rooms with a black light? Or <laughs> like, look how disgusting. There is semen all over these sheets. I so, don't want to put that in here. <laughs> so we're in a bus. Uh, hi, I'm Dan. That's Jake. We have Blake here who's setting everything up and kind of panicking. But uh, I can't believe I how know. good of a job. He's the master. We could not do anything without this guy. No. I'm serious. That's why we pay him so much. Yeah. That is why he makes more than uh, anybody who has ever made (laughs) Dallas radio history. Um, So, oh, also uh, here in the bus with us, let's just uh, say hello to the the most famous guy who's in the bus. Like, if this bus exploded right now. The headline, yeah, yeah, the headline it, is Jared Sandler. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Here's oh, Jared Sandler. Jared Sandler joins us in the that's bus. That's not true. For, yes, it is. It would no. be Texas Rangers radio play-by-play man and fell, and two podcasters. <laughs> right. you would, you'd be... I'm out. Yeah, yeah you're out. <laughs> yeah, Blake would be the odd man out here. I, I think you guys for sure would be the bigger story. But how would they describe us? Right. That's Former the thing. pioneers in the, <laughs> in the sports broadcasting yeah. world? It would be you, and you know it. I don't think you think so. MLB.com or MLB TV is running a piece on us? No. And we're here because this is a 690 remote. Yeah. I would say this one takes the cake. Yeah. Um, just a couple minutes in, I'd say thus far, I think the best one. Yeah. No, it's going to be it's gonna be pretty tough to top. And we're here because Sorry, of Wired a, Will. We're, we're here because <laughs> of a guy named Letty. Yeah. That's right. That's Letty. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you guys. You look being like here. a Letty. Yeah, my name's from the Boots. Like, if you ever go to the stockyards, okay, L- Letty Boots. That was my oh, family. Okay. That's your family? Yeah, that was my great grandfather. It was his last name, and he had all girls, so the name died. So my dad named me Letty to keep it going. But yeah, my whole family's wow. leather workers and all okay. that stuff. Okay, he's the most famous one in the bus. Yeah, yeah some corn. Yeah, I, I really got slided. Do you have a in trust fund? I wish. I want to it, trust It's fund. a lot of fucking boots, but yeah. <laughs> okay. It's got a closet <laughs> yeah. full of boots. Not even my size. So you get free boots. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, you're right. You're, you're, how many Keystone lights in are we? Uh, probably three-ish and an IPA and a Jello shot. He so made a really is, interesting decision. Damn. He had a, a Keystone light, and I said, I haven't seen one of those in a while. And the next beer he had was an IPA. <laughs> and I'm like, are you just doing math, like plus <laughs> minus to get to... And now he's back to Keystone. Yeah. yeah. So well, the Keystone's it. hydrating. Yeah. It is that's, that's 1230, <laughs> and the game starts at like 7. It's going to be a long day today. You know, usually <laughs> this kicks off at 3, so we well, we, yeah, I'm we just kind of got that down. But from what I understand, you guys do this every year. You should have – you should be pacing. You should have like, this is the way I do it. Don't I, you think Letty looks like he could handle it, though? He does. Yeah. Like me, you'd be like, you'll be asleep in your car 
by three. <laughs> yeah. Letty looks like he's ready to. This is our uh, go to pound 17th town. year, I believe, on the bus. We've okay. been coming for well over that, but. You ever meet Jared Sandler before? It's I pretty haven't. sweet, isn't it? Oh, yeah, man. It's really. Yeah. <laughs> what a moment. We, we yeah. got what a, we what got a big witnesses. letdown. <laughs> yeah. When the bus blows up later, they'll be like, he was with Jared Sandler. Yeah, so. yeah right. That's true. Yeah. yeah so The last words uh, Jared Sandler spoke to Letty. <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. How you doing? And then What's Letty's up, telling the news what happened. Well, his. His hair was perfect, yeah. but then all so, of a sudden we smelled gas. <laughs> you do not own this bus. A friend of yours. Well, bus. no, we own it. Uh, it stays at my place of employment. Uh, except for one day a year. So yesterday was a l- we we were a little nervous. Yesterday we took it for a little spin, and we're like, "Oh, the brakes are a little soft, guys." Okay, so you only don't tell Billy the start driver it behind once you. a year. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a big platform on the top of the bus. Have you been up up there, Jared? I saw it. Okay, it's insane. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. They have a uh, karaoke. Okay. They literally have a karaoke machine up there. They have, from what I understand, a you have some bongs. It was some you've beer named, bongs coming. You've named them. So now that's new for this year, they told me. Yeah. So up there is the beer bong. It it snakes all the way down here. So if you're just walking by the bus and you're like, hey, Ranger fan, they'll they'll call you over yeah. and yeah. you do a quick Frank the Tank. Yeah. Uh, the names of the bongs? El Bongi. Love it. Uh, and then what's the other bong? I, what do you Jose name it? Jose LeChug. Yeah, Jose LeChug. <laughs> <Chug. laughs> we need to work on that's that. Great. Yeah, I mean, Jose yeah. LeChug? That's good. That, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's the best. You're alone. Every, on that everyone one. gives El Bombi. Lo- I, I like Jose Leclerc getting some love. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we did try to DFA him, I think, and, but he was a he was a postseason hero. Yeah. You give away uh, Jello shots to those walking by. Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of hooping and hollering, and yeah, we try we try to make sure everyone's having a good time. You know. Okay, but the first ever night game. Yeah, that's that's why that's why that's why we're hydrating with the Keystone, sir. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got to pace ourselves a little differently this year. We we had down the two o'clock start, but the uh, six thirty is throwing some kinks and things. Well, this is incredible. Did you know? Do you know the backstory, Dan? No. Of how they acquired the bus and we uh so all of us the core went to uh, UNT. We played lacrosse there, and at some point we were like, hey, we need a bus to travel. So we bought the bus, kind of redid it. We it used to have a divider there with a something that we probably shouldn't talk about. in 2024 behind there, partition, little couple of mattresses and some situation back there. And yeah, then sure. For road trips and stuff, and then you know we were graduating and we're like, man, hey, new team, guys coming up, look at this bus we're giving you, and they're like, we don't want that fucking bus. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we kept the bus in in the family. Chad's dad. Uh, took it and he does bicycling and so he added the rooftop and he's this bus has been all over the country so yeah they uh they just kept the bus yeah so it's we awesome keep, so we you didn't it really for, have to pay for it no no we paid two thousand dollars i believe when we bought it okay my mechanic at work yesterday was like strong this thing's strong <laughs> I was That's like, good. it's it's leaking out of every hole possible. He's like, tap, top it off. Don't mess with it. <laughs> it's the coolest looking tailgate thing I've seen here. Uh, yeah, this will again. This will be tough to top for a six ninety in for the lot. Like, there's a three hundred thousand dollar RV. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. It still look two thousand dollar bus. Where's the Where's their Obongi? Yeah, I sent I sent Blake the video. Knox jumped off the bus one year. Jim Jim Knox. <laughs> yeah, he had us try to catch him in a chair. That didn't work out. But this is like when you go to a college game or like Lambo, where you hear or like Buffalo, where you hear about how great the tailgating scene is. This is like the thing yes. you look for, right? Like yes. not the standard whatever fancy yeah. RV or just the generic barbecue. This is like yeah, this is the feel this of is the it. fan. Yeah, this is like if if anyone is walking by and doesn't stop by here. And yeah, take a take a crack at Jose LeChug. And, yeah. right. <laughs> and we've we've got more coming. We've got the crawfish bowl coming shortly. And today, yeah, yeah, we got a oh yeah okay. So we'll feed you guys. You might take stick care. around. Yeah, uh, I I've, I've, I've been have told to have my wife peel them for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a baby. I've, you look like a suck the head type guy. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that, that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, no, you can, you can suck a golf ball through a hose. Yeah. Hey, or, look, there's Jeff Cavanaugh. Oh wow! Oh, it hey. is, uh, now it's a party. Oh, nice. <laughs> Dallas Media's own Jeff Cavanaugh, who is at. You're gonna have to re-rank the desk when the bus blows up. <laughs> Wasn't he talking about um, tanking? Hand him a microphone if you yeah. have one. Uh, yeah, tanking was a big topic the other day. Because now, I, I believe he's with a radio you, station where they're allowed to be on with us. You told me <laughs> about the tanking uh, to the to J- Jamie Newberg's class, and then I 
when I was driving home, because I think that was in the studio that day. I don't know. I was driving home and I heard Kavanaugh doing a segment on it too. So yeah, you, well, he does it every him. he does it every day. Oh, you beat on tanking. Newberg on the tanking thing. Yeah, yeah, he does tanking every day. Yeah, so I think you beat him to it is what I'm saying. Of course. Yeah, of course. We broke that news. Hey Hi. Jeff. Hey guys. Hey oh. Jeff Kavanaugh. <laughs> Welcome to the bus. Thanks. It's a kick-ass bus, man. Thanks. I like it a lot. I'm gonna stay. You can. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that I'm really authorized. No, to. you're you're fine. We have plenty of food, beer, Jello shots. I should uh, be gone. I should probably be gone before two. <laughs> okay. I, a, I got a thing I got to do. Is something happening today? Or? Hey, look over there. I, I yeah, I don't know what's going on. There's yeah. a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot. Of, but from what I understand, you and your group of buddies too have been doing this. Not just the bus, but you just been doing the opening day tradition. Yeah, forever? we're we're on twenty years strong. Because I have uh, one of the guys walked up to me and he's like, "Hey, here's a picture of me and you in 2007 outside of whatever the, the ballpark for opening day. Maybe when what comedian do we have out here? Uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh. That's right. <laughs> it was extremely confusing. Right. But you had Bobcat Goldthwait from the parking lot of Rangers opening day. I yeah. didn't know he told jokes. I thought he just yelled. It was a little bit of both. And you couldn't get him to leave. Yeah. Right. I mean, what else does he have going three on? Three segments. Yeah, he is. Police Academy 12. Were you there? Uh, no, I've just had to go through that audio, and y'all are like, okay, well. <laughs> All right. It's, <laughs> it's Bob. He'll be, he'll be at the Addison Improv. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's actually Rangers opening day, so let's get to Kevin Millwood. Don't you guys have a thing like this, you and your little buddies? Yes. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> little, little, little buddies. Little buddies. Yeah, little buddies. Are you doing buddies. something tonight? Yeah, we're on the we're on the other side. I'll join them tonight. You're gonna get a yard long margarita, <laughs> like you did a couple years ago. Um, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't really. The only know. photo I have of him at opening day, he's sipping like a red and green swirled yard long <laughs> margarita. <laughs> okay, you never know dude. what opening day brings. Sure. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I wanted to plug our merch site. Did you see what they put up there today? Did not. The uh, let me show. I'm gonna I show. saw it. It looks like the local teams' stuff, Jake. But okay. it's dumb zone instead of the local teams' names. That's right. I get Let's it. see if uh, the Rangers' own Jared Sandler is impressed by these. The uh, do you think that's legal? Do you think we're allowed to? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to comment, but <laughs> it looks very Rangerish. I I do love him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So you can go to dumbzone.com and then click on the merch thing there. Right, Blake? Is that a better way to do it? Than Don't tell John Blake. I might have to have a friend buy some of those. <laughs> like Shohei? Yeah, like Shohei. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be my ePay. Aww. All right, well, uh, we're here. Thanks, well, Letty. Well, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're resetting now. We're in, on a bus, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're at opening day. And Let's talk some baseball with Jared. Okay. What do you say? Yeah, sure. He's giving what do you us got? his valuable baseball time. I got nothing. Oh, man. How many games are you slated to do this year? I think uh, 80 on radio and 10 on TV. TV. Yep. That's right. That's where the big bucks are. He's rolling. growing up. Yeah. Do you actually get paid more when you do the TV game? I do. Okay. Yeah. Do you get, you don't get, do you get per diem for Radio Road? Yeah, when, I, when we okay. travel, I get per diem. Okay. It I changed did. after the most recent CBA negatively, but we get it. No one's going to feel badly for me. Is there anything better than picking up an envelope of cash? So, you know what? I don't know. I mean, it makes no difference because, you know, a penny is a penny, but it now gets direct deposited. Oh, boo. I used to love yeah. when it was so valuable. Because your wife and stuff won't know if they just give you the cash. <laughs> right. Yeah. For one. And two, I never carry cash. And so it was always, it was never like a, a hard set number. It was like, you know, Something in seven dollars and thirty six cents. I remember right? that they would like put literal coins yeah. in the envelope. But I don't keep cash, so like for valet or tipping, it was always so valuable. And there, there are a lot of like valet, Dan. That's how these people no, live no, on no, the no, road. No, 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 stop it. <laughs> but there, there's like etiquette. Just throw the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, there's etiquette. Like when we travel, like you're supposed to tip these people. That I don't carry cash, and yeah. so, and I don't know when you guys go to a hotel. How often do you guys tip the the people who like when they turn over your room, or do you tip at all? Because yeah, a little bit. I leave money when I leave. Okay, but not because I never have. But like the guy who brings your your luggage rack up, 
he's just kind of standing there. Yeah, you, know? you, you might not give see him, him a little something. Oh, hey, that's yeah. a can I tell you? That's a big change. Two years ago, they stopped the the procedure was we get to a hotel, we go up to our room, and then when we're ready, we call down and someone brings our bag up. Which that seems cool, but then you got a tip. Well, for Corey Seager tipping a guy twenty dollars to bring your bag up, what what does that mean? I'd like to keep that twenty. I'm very capable of taking my own bag up to my room. Yeah. Two years ago, that changed. Now we are allowed to go and get our bag and bring it up to our room if we'd like. If we want them to bring it up, they can. Okay. But I always, I always go and bring up my own bag. Okay. Yeah. Some usually, places don't give you the option, even if you're a regular guy. Because I used to be like the only one in our traveling party that would tell I didn't want the maid in there any day. Yeah. I just wanted, I'll just sleep on the same thing. Speaking I'd of the black light. Bring my own towel anyway. <laughs> Weird, you know, so. Yeah, I, I know. And then I would leave her a 20 when I left if we were there for like a week. And I thought that was pretty cool, mm-hmm. right? I'm a great guy. No? That's great. Aren't yeah. I awesome? Yeah, thank you. That's really what I wanted to hear. Um, but yeah, now, like, you have to ask for them to clean your room every day. Do you know that? Well, some places. They've I mean, kind of done a switch. Some places just have like the sign that you can put on the door yes or flip it to no. They're kind of putting it on you like, oh, do you want to save uh, water and the earth? But if not, you know, we'll come and change your, your sheets every day. Yeah. But if you'd like to uh, be a good human, then, uh, then don't hit this. Anyway. Don't hit this. Where are the Rangers? What's their over-under this year on uh, wins? 88, right? Yeah, someone sent me a text this morning, 88 and a half. And where, where were they last year? 90. No, no, no! At the uh, beginning uh, of the season, ooh, it might oh, have been seventies. Like, yeah, it was sub eighty. Yeah, Damn. yeah, they were not expected to finish over five hundred last year. Doesn't it almost? <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> nice? Doesn't it feel weird? Like it doesn't really still feel real. I think. No, it does no. not. It does not. Because it kind of came out of nowhere. Well, half the Metroplex couldn't watch the games. That didn't help. Yeah, that still doesn't help, does it? <clears throat> no, no. I, you bring that up, like I. I can't put my finger on it either. It maybe it's because the Stars had those battles and came up short for a few years, and then won. And the Mavs obviously had 06, and then the all the years, and they finally got over the hump. It's not that the Rangers didn't, but it wasn't like a part of this team, right? Yeah, 10 yeah. and 11. It was as like a different era. This team came out of nowhere to win, and it happened so quickly. There wasn't like a multi-year progression to get to this point where they came up short in the playoffs three years in a row or I don't know had they won in like 2013 or something it would have felt like that yeah yeah yeah. and I if I can interject I really think the fan base was it you know baseball people knew that Heim was an up-and-coming badass low won a silver slugger I don't I don't think the general population realized that no I think you're right you know so last year kind of snuck up on when we all looked uh, us baseball people looked at go, this is a really good lineup if they can put it together but I don't I don't think the majority of people just didn't know that. Bought their team. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody said. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, bought, just bought a team. We just bought a championship. <laughs> and then it's like, how come you didn't sign Shohei? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. now we're mad. Yeah. So, DeGrom and Scherzer, is it August? Uh, Scherzer may. They, so, they, they made a decision, I guess, technically today or maybe yesterday. To not put him on the 60? Yeah. yeah. So, I, that, that means they're pretty confident that he'll be back in mid to late May. Uh, Degrom early August if there aren't any setbacks and it's smooth sailing. So hang that's, on, that's but you don't know what you're going to get either. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The the whole the idea that oh hey just they'll be fine and then these three guys will come back and you know that'll be a Who's huge boost. Tyler Malley, okay, the guy they signed. Okay. I uh, yeah, that's nice in theory, but you don't like Malley and, and Degrom or Tommy John guys feel great about them next year because you know. It, Typically, you give them that extra buffer of time, they're fine. I think both those guys are going to be badasses next year, but this year it's just a crapshoot. And with Scherzer, it's a back thing. Like I, I, I hope he's okay, but it wasn't like he was, you know, Johnny Ace last year with the Mets of the Rangers. But they also don't really need him to be. I think they just need him to be a reliable starter who can take the ball every five days. Are you worried about the rotation? I'm worried about the depth of the rotation. I think I think the Lorenzen acquisition was huge, not because I expect him to be an all-star like he was last year, but because now when one guy inevitably goes down, and you always use 8, 10, 13 starters, you're now turning, maybe it's Cody Bradford. You know, whoever gets bumped out of the rotation, 
and Jack Lyatt are at a good camp. So you got seven guys you feel good about giving you competitive starts. But after that, uh, you know, Jose Urania, maybe. You know, that's kind of why they kept him around, and they're going to have him in the bullpen to keep him in the organization. But the starting depth is, I think, what is a legitimate concern. And you just got to hope they stay healthy the first couple months. Yeah, that was the <clears throat> the worrisome part for me is you had Heaney kind of spot starting there in the playoffs, and then now he's your two. I, so I think – I don't know what order they'll they'll throw him in. Uh, I think John Gray is your second best starter, but you it might make sense to break up Evaldi and Gray because Heaney, Dunning, and Bradford, at least for right now until Lorenzen's in there, aren't guys you're you're expecting to give you 90 to 100 pitches. And we've seen the way they've used Heaney and Bradford. That's more 50 to 70 pitches. Uh, and so if you break those two guys up, Evaldi and, and Gray – you better protect your bullpen. So we're getting a real seam head. So Jake knows all this stuff, big seam head. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's what I think. I, I think they might consider that when structuring their rotation. What are you most excited about? I think I already know the answer. Like for today or just in general? The season. I mean, honestly, the, the answer is probably the same. I, seeing the banner and getting to celebrate with the fans in the ballpark will be awesome. Whatever happens uh, this year – I. Not it's I'm not I don't have the like the mindset of oh it's gravy they can go 0 162 I'm way too competitive for that but this is incredibly special you know they win the World Series on the road and yes there was the parade but this is the first time in Globe Life Field where they can celebrate and, and recognize everything with the fans uh, and I think I think the Houston Texas rivalry will be as fun this year as it's been uh, since the the Astros went to the American League just because now the Rangers finally have skins on the wall that they can push back with and so i think that'll be pretty cool too i thought you were going to say wyatt yeah i know i'm i'm excited I, honestly I'm, I'm excited for Corey seager every time he bats like i if he can stay healthy i think we're watching a guy who will get to the hall of fame he's got to stay healthy and that's obviously been a, a little bit of a road bump but yeah i'm excited for wyatt i'm excited for evan i their lineup is so good uh but yeah i guess my, my head's still focused on the banner and the ring and that whole deal I don't really live in the past. Yeah, no, that's you, you and Marcus Simeon. <laughs> yeah, Although you mentioned sure. the parade, and that brought a smile to my face, remembering <laughs> that parade. I'll spare. Dan's not a fan of the parade. You don't like parades? Mm. Uh, I just, love parades. Just <laughs> <laughs> just, but it was clear that this World Series victory came out of nowhere. Oh, okay. When it came to uh, being able to plan, a, like, oh, my gosh, really? We got a parade? How do we do it? That's the opposite of Laura Miller. Let me right? look. Yeah. Like planning in the first round of the playoffs. I don't think they had a route ready and all that. Yeah, they, they weren't prepared for. Well, Cass, what are your expectations of Wyatt? Man, I don't know. I was reading a bunch of stuff over the last week, and I heard uh, you talking to Nate Lowe about batting after him in spring training, and I got really fired up. It's pretty good, huh? It's I don't know. I mean – People are comparing him to like that he has the athleticism of Mike Trout, yeah, which is just insane. And you know, I think he could be, he could be an All Star as a rookie. Yeah, I don't know how much he's gonna play. I mean, he's gonna be DH most days, right? So I, the reality is that stuff all works itself out. One injury to, the, to yeah. an outfielder, he's in there every day. And then they're gonna try and DH Adolis every once in a while to keep him fresh. If Laoti doesn't hit against lefties, then he might not start against lefties. And now you move Evan Carter to center and Wyatt to left. So I think he'll he'll DH more than he plays left field. But I don't know that he's going to overwhelmingly DH uh, and you know only sparingly play the outfield. I think they want to try get him into left field as much as they can. But if he plays most, if he's mostly a DH and Shohei's gone, it's pretty decent path to an all-star game if he's actually as good as we think he is. Yeah, no, 100%. He he is... I would be floored. I said this earlier today. If you are... It's always dicey in baseball to put push your chips in on a rookie who's not had a single plate appearance. I just look at, like, the athleticism. He's, like, a really good runner. Like, he's fast. Uh, The body... I mean, he's built like a house... And he, the guy's 22 years old, and he carries himself like he's been in the league for 10 years and the disposition, and, like, I don't know. I'd feel pretty good about pushing all my chips in on this guy, being a stud at some point. I, there might be ups and – or there will be ups and downs this year. He's a rookie. But, man, I mean, this guy – you tell me he makes 10 all-star teams, I'm I'm not taking the under on that. Like, he's he is that impressive. And it, I don't care about the stats in, in spring training. It's just, like, the body, the movement – 
the, you know how hard he hits the ball, the way he hits righties and lefties into all fields. He's I don't know. I, I haven't seen anything like this. It's pretty fun. I'm just hesitant because it's right on the heels of Josh Young really surprising us. Leoti sort of kind of came out of nowhere offensively. Um, and then, of course, Evan Carter. It's like, how many how many guys and rookies can we count on? Yeah, like but, this? dude, think about this. Prior to that, we were None. like, it was nothing. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Joe, you have to like, go back a long way. We were hanging our hat on Gallo, Mazzara, Odor, and, like, what was that, right? So, like, yeah. I get what you're saying, but if it does even out, then maybe it's evening out. And I will say the one thing that this organization in recent years has shown to be pretty good at is developing hitters. Uh, they gotta, they got to step the game up on the pitching side, but uh, they have shown an ability to develop hitters. And uh, I think, I think you know, the, the, the mischaracterization with that is it doesn't just stop in the minors, right? Like, they have – helped guys when they get to the big leagues continue to grow and develop. Yeah. And I think they've got a really talented hitting staff at the big league level, which which helps. So I, I think that's that's a big part of the conversation that sort of gets lost as well, is that this is a, a coaching staff now that helps guys grow when they get to the big league level, which, you know, the, the development and growth shouldn't stop once you become a major leaguer. Bought the team. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it seems, and all of a sudden it seems like they're good, they're built to be good for a while. Yeah. And that seems kind of out of nowhere, too, after so many years of trying to just build something. And it's just – it's fascinating to me still just how, how they did it in a weird, different way. The inverse. They got their huge free agent signings before they were good. And that's just not how you usually right. see it done. Yeah. That's imp- that's just a testament to Chris Young, I guess. It's CY. I mean, obviously it's – I call him CY. Uh, that and a briefcase full of money. Do you call him CY? I call him CY. Yeah. Yeah. KG, CY, all the initials. JK, JK. DM. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, obviously the money is the thing. But you, yeah, somebody yeah, else, no. So, I mean, that's, somebody else could give you the money. And You know what? Okay, so I heard this the other day. Oh, can I? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no. No. I was going to say, like, that, that free agent class. So the Rangers signed Seager and Simeon. The other guys who were out there who they didn't have interest in, Carlos Correa, I mean, that hasn't worked out. Javier Baez, that definitely hasn't worked out. And love him, DFW guy, but Trevor Story, that hasn't worked out. So you can you can back you up the Brinks the right truck. You, yeah, yeah, it's not easy to pick the right guys sometimes, and they've done a good job of that. Like research what kind of guys they are, what kind of prep they put into their thing. Are they going to fall off? Are they robots? Yeah, yeah, because that's what they signed, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They signed robots, and I feel like that's also great for the young guys coming up to see these guys. Yeah. Like, oh, this is what I do? This is how I just be boring, you know. Just it, yeah. it's not uh, whatever. Des in charge of the room. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. I mean, those team those teams before were fun, but they were also, you know, they were wild ass. I don't know if you wanted like to bring Mike up Mike Napoli co- to yeah. teach you. Yeah. How to- <laughs> he's he's, he's hitting El Bongi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've been they've been really good for Josh Young, I mean, yeah. in particular. I've just, heard him say that. Yeah. Yeah, just the approach, all that kind of stuff. But I, uh, I was going to say, though, I was talking to somebody about the Bally thing um, the other day. And they were saying, you know, the Rangers, once Bally leaves, the Rangers get $100 million a year from Bally. Yeah. $100 million a year. And so that is a huge problem moving forward. But it's not just for them, though. You know? Right. Oh, so yeah. So it'll be... Pretty yeah, but the Rangers had out. one of the better deals, I think, yeah. in Major League Baseball. And that's the way Major League Baseball teams differentiate differentiate themselves is by deals. You know, well, in it's local TV. It's local money. So that's why the Yankees are so huge. The Dodgers are so huge. They get huge local money, uh, where the NFL obviously shares all money. Um, so, I don't know. Moving forward. Well, they have a, the good news is they have a few... Good young guys, yeah, that are cheap. We got a, a, a business update from our business insider over here, bringing up a good point. Well, oh, just, just jump in. Hey guys, they have a patch. And you that, see, they got the patch now. Jersey patch now, first time. That's got to be worth a bunch of money. <laughs> Ray Davis's old company, Energy Transfer. They got a patch. Oh, you're selling advertising on the on the yeah. Yeah. now. No, that was, was a big announcement yesterday. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well, I, well, how did I miss that? How'd you miss that? It's yeah. got to be worth. <laughs> you got to get you got to get the updated jersey with the patch. How is a patch not worth Jordan Montgomery? <laughs> what happened? Like we to the, got a patch. What, what happened to the game I love? <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I never 
wanted to see a patch unless it was for somebody like an owner that died. Yeah. <laughs> or his yeah. wife died or something like that. That's They're selling good. Globe Life Park or Globe Life Field in Choctaw. What are they calling it now? The one across the street? Um, it's Choctaw Stadium. Choctaw, Choctaw Stadium. Stadium. Choctaw Stadium. Big weekend okay. over there. They still got the bell over there? They got the Renegades. Uh, no, they no. don't have the bell. <laughs> the Do bell. you remember the bell? The, the, the AmeriQuest the bell? Yeah. Bell. <laughs> wow. That was quite an era. <laughs> yes, it was. Are you guys sticking around for the game, or are you just busting it out here? No, we're heading out. Yeah. I didn't. Even, he's going to the game. He goes every well, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, with the yard. Market. He's our representative. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he'll tell us what happened. I'll, I'll, Baseball report, Blake. I'll report back tomorrow. Yeah, if he can make it in in time. Yeah, that's a good question. I kind of yeah, would have no liked telling. to go tonight. But Come I on, man. honestly kind of didn't know that we had tickets. Well, you Maybe still that can. was my fault. Mm, at this point, you I'm... You have co- tickets? We... They're oh, you, spoken for the, now. Somebody else. Uh, Le- okay. Lady, 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 Lady Boots bought us tickets. Yeah. yeah. Are you sticking around for the game? No. I heard I heard they weren't a sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan was gone. Or it was a sweet, but it, he wasn't... Uh, the cuisine was a bit off for him. Yeah, there's no salmon? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Be careful with those. Wow. No, they're clean. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to watch what you eat around here. Yeah. It could be laced. Are they, laced. Are, these, are these fruity pebble cookies? <laughs> I haven't heard anybody say laced in forever. <laughs> fruity pebble cookies. Okay, I'm in. You know Blake's down. Yep. Yeah, Blake's down for anything, especially if it's laced. laced. <laughs> yeah, get nuts. I'm just glad Blake's in a good mood today. Are you sure? He's yeah, not, at least he can't take jello shots. It's a game to call. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> you guys, if you guys can get Dave, I mean, it's a nationally televised game. I think Dave, Dave always works hard, but I think his responsibilities are a little bit on the lighter side today. Maybe you could convince him. We got, we got you yeah. for Jose Lechug. Yeah, yeah. No, I love, if you can get that on video, that'd be amazing. He probably doesn't want that. That's, but, a, that's yeah. a guy gunning for yeah. his job. Yeah. No, stop, <laughs> Blake. <laughs> shut up. I heard they have heroin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the last thing I need. <laughs> I love Dave. Dave, I I told you guys off here. I I don't know what I would do without Dave. Yeah, but what's the rivalry? Ga- what's the there's, rivalry like? There's no rivalry. No, he just wants to say this publicly. No, yeah. Yeah, there's no rivalry. Yeah, no. Dave we'll we'll tell you guys the truth later. Dave's Dave's really good at what he does. He he is not threatened at all, nor should he be. And I know that the more I talk about this, you guys are going to bring it up. To <laughs> I was going to say, why do you keep it? <laughs> yeah, it just stop. It. Yeah, why do you keep thinking about it? I will. <laughs> uh, Jared said he you hopes guys. you die. <laughs> Screw you guys. I want to give you a little today in Twitter. Okay. Because I saw this on Twitter today. Well, that's, ESPN's yeah. Tim Kirkchen <laughs> uh-huh. launching a baseball podcast with his son. Oh. Uh, his not son so good. Involved. This is the worst impact that Bill Simmons has had on the industry. Do you think it's him that started? Doesn't he podcast with his daughter sometimes? Well, I mean, oh, yeah. Zoe? <laughs> Shut up. Don't <laughs> Stop knowing that. <laughs> what are they calling it? Uh, I don't know. Girl Sorry. Dad. All I have is the headline. You know they have a lame name. Yeah. Tim Kirkshin, really good basketball player. He's really? Like, like, he's not taller than – he's smaller than I am. Like, Legendarily good. The ESPN games? Uh, spring training pickup games back in the day. He would, like, run the game. Wow. Like, like, yeah. Like, hmm. five – you ask anyone – I never got – he's had double hip replacement, so I've, I have not gotten to see that version of Tim Kirkshin. But, like, apparently a Steve Nash clone on the floor and will yell at you. Like, he is intense. I love that. Uh, I just yeah. gained a whole lot of respect for Tim, Tim Kirkshin. Tim like, yes. We're back up after the daughter thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably it was Simmons, right? Like, what? The, there's obviously a ton of nepotism to carry. I thought it was the, you with Chappie. That is 100% <laughs> your bit that oh, I hey, I've never wanted Chappie on. let happen because I'm a good teammate. And it's also, that's in reverse. That's true. Simmons also did that, but I was okay with that. I drew the line at, ah, uh, so Zoe and I at the Kings game last, uh, <laughs> last night. We're going to talk about that on a, on a pie. So, Jared, you know his struggles. You know there's a D in that, right? Pod? <laughs> pie. <laughs> uh, no, Jared, you know how he's struggled all these years and all that kind of stuff, just uh, working the minor leagues. I mean, you've done it right. You've worked your way up. You're, you're now trying to worm your way in, stealing some of Dave Raymond's uh, limelight <laughs> 10 games during the year. But uh, So how do you feel about, like, um, I can't even remember his name now. 
Is it Flip Carey? Who's the latest Carey? <laughs> yeah. Chris Carey. Chris Carey, Chris the Carey. great, great grandson. Of, yeah. I met him the other day in spring training. Uh, he's like 20. Yeah, he's, and he's the lead play-by-play guy for he was, what is it? The A's. Yeah, he's doing. He's he's splitting. So he's, he's doing all their home TV games, right? All right. Uh, he beat out his twin brother for the job. <laughs> I, yeah. I I know that only because he like tweeted him like, "Keep your head up, bro. Yeah. Like your time's coming." He, he is very bro. It absolutely is coming. <laughs> yeah. very, very In fact, nice. he might leapfrog right into Jared's oh, no, job. For sure. uh, he'll just, the Rangers will hire him. I was, you know, I made some comment. I was like, "Oh, you know, we're in Oakland. You know, get a meal or whatever." He's like, "Yeah," or, or like, "Get some drinks at the bar or whatever." Like, you know, he's just like, "Let's oh, go out a party." He's still in that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the best part he's was in his twenties, right? Yeah, I think he's like twenty-two. Oh my the, God. The, the best part was I was asking him. Uh, I, I made a comment because Eric met him. Eric Nadell met him a couple years ago, maybe when he was doing Double A baseball and went to Frisco. And Eric, there was an off day. Eric drove to Frisco to go and meet him because Eric's friends with his dad. And and I said, oh, you know, Eric says good things about you. And he said, yes, Mr. Nadell has been very good to me. And Mr. Hicks uh, seems like a really nice nice gentleman or something like that. Like some kind of like, you're calling him Mr. Nadell, yeah. Mr. Hicks. Like, and three years later, he's on? like, now What's you're going? the old guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's pretty gross. Yeah. That's pretty gross. Although the A's are probably paying him like 30K, so it's not like it, it's very board op money. Yeah, the A's are pretty <laughs> notorious for that, right? Is that right? Blake Jones money? Yeah. Ooh. No. Come on, that's that's like per show for Blake, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. that's per. That's previous. That's what they paid Blake, to get him out yeah. here today. Previous are they uh, are they still in Oakland this year? Yes, yeah, this year. Yeah. yeah, and then next year it's Vegas, but uh, not the Vegas Stadium. Don't, don't like know. A, yeah, it could be Reno. Could be kind of in the Northern California area. Could be, could be, yeah, like Vegas. But that state, the stadium they they hope to play in long term is not going to be ready for a few years. Mm. Boy, they're almost like having the, uh, like having the. The commanders of the Giants, you know, it's like look, that's probably a free win. <laughs> like just a team that spends absolutely no money, no money on like training staff and facilities and salary. It's like all right, and broadca- I guess that- broadcast booths, right? Yeah, wasn't yeah the like the rat or raccoon or yeah. whatever possum, right? Issue? Yeah, no. is that the worst broadcast? So it's scene? It's, it's not the view is actually really good. But it just is like it hasn't been updated since 1980 or whatever. I mean, like stained walls and odd spacing, but it's not the worst view at all. Uh, but it's just not kept up very well. What is Washington? Like, really? I'm not joking when I say the birds. That's newish. Yeah, but that's the problem: is that all these new ballparks are pushing the press box higher and higher because they make money on suites and seats. That mm. so. I mean, that's, that's why, you know, we're pretty high up. We're not as high as Washington. Washington legitimately, like, the birds are, like, they will fly beneath you. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I, I'm, I wish I was, like, making a joke. I am dead serious. I finally experienced it for the last time last year. There are birds that are, they, well, they're I'm not going up there. Yeah. <laughs> you crazy? It is. It's pretty absurd. I like that stadium as a fan. Yeah, no, DC? it's cool park. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, so, best stadium? For uh, view or just in just general? everything. What do you like the best? I, What's your favorite place to travel? I love. I, I think Wrigley's really cool. The booth stinks. The booth is smaller than like this seat. Like you're, I have to sit on Matt's lap. Uh, but Wrigley's like the fans, the the vibe, the bar scene right around Wrigley with Wrigleyville. Like that, they've got to figure it out. You know, like with the subway, it makes it so easy. Like, it's so cool to just see people get off the subway and roll into the game. I mean, like, I wish we had something like that. That'd be pretty sweet, but Wrigley's awesome. Uh, the Philadelphia fan base, like, they, that's pretty cool. Um, trying See? To think. Petco. These guys give me crap about it all the time because they say I want to be from Philly. No, they, dude, their fans are, they're pretty awesome. I, I, I understand that, like, Dallas people can't like, but, like, their fans are sweet. Uh and then San Diego's got a beautiful park and the best food. I think Petco Park's got the best ballpark food. And it's right downtown, too. Yeah. 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 What about PNC? Have you been there? PNC's cool. Yeah. No, no. PNC's a beautiful park. Uh, yeah. it's, it, PNC's got the best view because yeah. you look out and see what the Allegheny. I'm not like – views for, for me are cool for five seconds, and then my ADD mind like moves on. Like, I've okay. seen the view. Like, I don't – like, what am I going to do? Just stare at it? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, awesome. So 
I've no, had that like, conversation with my wife before. She's like, look at it. I'm yeah. like, I am. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Like when we yeah. go to a hotel, the first thing my wife does is open the window to see like what our view is. I could not I could literally stay at a hotel for a week and not even think once. Like I wonder what my view is. Like <laughs> I don't. That's just. But but it is by far and away the prettiest view looking out in baseball. No I, doubt. I had a good experience there because they they closed the bridge after the game and the crowd just walks across the bridge over the river and into downtown. Yeah, and it was a cool scene. The sure. players will sometimes, if you go the right time, players will either walk to and from on the bridge. So if you okay. want to catch a visiting player uh, and the weather's nice, yeah, hang around on the bridge and they'll be they'll be walking across to the the downtown hotel. It's pretty neat. Boy, young me. Just so envies you, but not now. I don't now. <laughs> but young me, like my bit, like when I saw those guys or the local radio station would have on the the guys that were going across country to go to every ballpark in oh, yeah. in a month or whatever. I was like, oh, those are the coolest guys in the world. I wish one day. I, yeah, I was. I absolutely <laughs> vowed I would do that. I'm gonna have a workbench at my house. Like I have a few things I always wanted. <laughs> A workbench. Um, <laughs> and I do. I now have a workbench at my house. All right. I've just put stuff on it. Yeah. yeah. I don't really work on it. Hang your laundry. But yeah, man. And now you've been to every stadium. And, and probably even double in not, certain. Not ever. I, so this year I will I will check off the I I've not been to the new Braves Park, Truist. Okay. I'll go there in a few weeks. Um, and I have not been there's one more um, Is it Dan L East? Since you haven't been to the Braves? Oh, you know what? This is actually really random. I have not. I've never been to Cleveland. I've never been to a, and I'll do that uh, in August. I've never okay. been to. I wish. I wish I went in the '90s when it was Jacobs. I've never been to Progressive. Okay. Um, I would usually tell people to uh, go outside the left field and uh, go look for my brick because I have a brick, but I'll, I will they've, go. they've removed those bricks. Oh no. Mm. And I have a chance to uh, acquire that brick. I just got to. I got to get to Cleveland somehow and get that brick. But Do you want me to get it? it for you? Huh? Can I pick it up for you when I go? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'm I'll, serious. I'd pick it up. I'll that should you, be in uh, the studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, yeah, my name WHK Radio is where I worked, and they bought us all bricks. <laughs> um, the perks of radio. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't and that so, seem so foreign to think a radio station nowadays would spend money on? Oh that? my gosh, for sure. That's but so I guess bizarre. they wanted to spend money. Yeah, I don't know to promote <laughs> the station. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yeah, like so. Hey, it's you know what? WHK. As you're walking by, you're like. I'm gonna listen. We should check yeah, it's it out. At WHK <laughs> and, and and Dan McDowell and and yeah, I, I believe that got us a lot of ratings, fellas. It's been real. I gotta head out. You gonna take uh, your Jello shots or any of these cookies? I uh, I'll take a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> the Jello shot maybe a little risky. I would. I mean, they say it's cool, but I would be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then he says it's cool. Yeah, we go way back. The the cookies. Yeah. The cookies, okay. Yeah. All right. Those. Just cookies. I will stay take away from some cookies. A uh, fruity pebble cookie. All right, nice. that's the there great Jared Sandler. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Jared. Yeah. It's Jared. <laughs> you ever heard that before? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, I will uh, pick yeah. the lowest hanging fruits. Uh, I am not creative. Thanks, dog. Thank you. There he goes. Out to slay some ass, See you, <laughs> Jared Sandler. Enjoy the games. What's on the show today? Our show? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were asking Kavanaugh. Um, no. I mean, that would work too, I guess. Yeah, what do you got coming up, Kavanaugh? He's got Mike Reiner. What do you think he's doing on opening day? Really lean on baseball Jesus today. Yeah. Yeah. Lean on baseball. <laughs> we're going to do uh, Reiner Ranks It. Ah, uh, yes. Stuff about baseball. And I'm hoping Hot Dog is high on the list. Yeah. My top left fielders. Yes. <laughs> Ranger history, Rusty Greer. No, I'm sorry. I've just been sitting here uh, awkwardly because Billy invited me out to the thing, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, there's gonna dumb something there." I'm like, "Yeah, that's cool." He's like, "Mike Adams is gonna be out there." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's a buddy of mine. I'll say hi." And then I sat down and I have a headset and a mic, and I'm like, "What am I doing? Do I leave? Am I gonna? What am I doing?" It's up to you, man. All right. Well, if I you're love looking you guys. for a uh, an on ramp, then that's tough to. Yeah, we don't really do that. Like we don't really extend it. Look at this straggler. Oh, that's tough. All right. Well, you guys have a kick-ass show. No, I see oh, you, right. too. <laughs> you too. There's uh, Jeff Cavanaugh. He's from. Was from the fan. Can I? Uh, oh my gosh! He's currently from uh, the freak. We and thought we YouTube. had the most famous Go person Scott. today oh, wow. on the bus. Scott. This is Go insane. <laughs> Look at this. Hi, Dave. Look at this. Well, he looks Dave so nice. Dave Raymond. Yeah. Golly, you guys. 
took him to a couple of nights. I'd be willing to pay the ultimate price. <laughs> Joining Wait. us now in the bus, the bang bus, is... <laughs> oh, is that what this is? The bang bus. <laughs> <That's> Thank <right>. you. <laughs> these are all already... Hey, it. you might want to just get these cold again, because... Oh, okay. Yeah, so they don't go bad. I mean, Man, I can't wait to tell you all about how Jared was ripping you. Oh, my oh, God. He's like, Shocker. past his time, doesn't Shocker. really understand the new rules. Right. Isn't working today. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> also true? Yeah. <laughs> the great Dave Raymond. Yeah, that's right. I guess that's the... The uh, the bittersweet part of yeah winning the World Series, you don't get to do the first game. Yeah, that part sucks. Yeah. Well, the first yeah the first game today anyway, but it's the postseason games. Yeah. They're doing nothing. Yeah. All the 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 losses that you had to endure over the years, and yeah. you don't even get to taste the the sweetest. Fruit. At least John Smoltz was super likable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think most DFW fans were pretty happy about his yeah. work. You know, we had those two exhibition games. There was some guy down just beneath the booth the other day, and he yelled right before the start of the game. He turned, hey, hey, hey. We looked down there, and he's got, you know, some homemade T-shirt. I think it said, suck it, Smoltz. <laughs> Something like that. In a different <laughs> life, good. that definitely would have been Dan. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess it would have been. Yeah. yeah. As you're traveling from ballpark to ballpark. Yeah, yours would have been uh, t- Ted Cruz face on there or something. Yeah, I think I had a Huck the Fuskers. <laughs> Whoa, shit. hey. Yeah. Hey. For a, uh, for a Texas-Nebraska game. So that ain't right. No? Not as a Husker. Oh, oh you're a Husker. No. Well, I grew up in Nebraska. Okay. okay. Go Big Red, GBR. Yeah, but then you left you as quick as you could. thought you went to, like, Stanford I or did, something. but... What? Did you get that? No. no, no, no. Yeah. You know, this, red school. <laughs> yeah. This, that's right. It's it's about, it's uh, it's where you grew up, right? It's yeah. Also, that's true. one team T-shirt plays fan. football; the other team has a football team. Ooh, if you get my Stanford's been good over the years. They, they actually have been, yeah. Yeah, not Huck, recently. This is just good. The Cardinal, yeah. <laughs> Cuck the, cu- right? Cuck the Cardinal, yeah. <laughs> that's. Wasn't Stanford always one of those yeah. teams that doesn't have an S in the end of the name and yeah. like yeah. The trivia? It used to be a big trivia thing because yeah. there's only like five of them. Now it's yeah, like every WNBA yeah. team. Yeah. Those all end in X. Yeah. A lot of X. X, X, X. <laughs> a lot of Sparks. X. No. Yeah. You wouldn't watch that anyways. <laughs> no. Not the WNBA one. <laughs> so, I, you know, I've seen some stuff of the new digs, right? The the new studio. Potential. Awesome. Potential. That's not a thing? Well, um, we're trying it out. We're trying it on for size. We do like it so far. And the building is trying us on for size, so <laughs> However, that, could, that could be a bigger concern. To what if this was our traveling studio? <laughs> could you <laughs> imagine we're doing a remote, yeah. and we don't have to go into your restaurant yeah. to do the remote. We just park this out front. Yeah, I just want to be clear that if any restaurants would a- actually like us to come inside, we oh, will okay. be well, I'm just <laughs> the worst the salesman yeah. of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Because I, I will say, <laughs> it's, I don't have to go into your shitty, dingy, dingy restaurant, <laughs> terrible food. No, we, we would like to come to your restaurant. Yeah. I want to be real clear about that. Also, I, it, worth noting, right, March 28th, kind of a nice day. It's Ooh. a beautiful day. June 28th, not as pleasant in this bus. Yeah, no, probably yeah. not. But the AC is a little uh, non-existent. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get a sponsor to AC this thing up. Now he's back in the game. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give us a call. Yeah, they've been bringing this out here for like 20 years. Really? Yeah. Pretty yeah. sweet. They said Jim They're, Knox once jumped off the top of it. I find that very easy to believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, two. he's scared of heights. He's scared of heights. Really? Yeah. And yet he would still do stupid stuff like he would climb up, you know, on the catwalks in Toronto. Love and, of the game. He's a and then we'd come back down and they'd be like, dude, that was awesome. He's like, I, I, I just about threw up. Like, what? Nazi? Yeah, I don't, I don't like heights. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> climb around up there. Oh, well, whatever you guys need. Yeah. He was a gamer. Yeah. So, Dave, you expressed to me off the air, you're very concerned with the Rangers spring training record being one of the worst in baseball. How are they going to get out, get out of this mess? Yeah, no, that was troubling. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, just, <laughs> it's, that, it's that early read you get. On a team, right? I like, mean, where's the where's the negative, heart? Negative yeah. momentum. Where's the heart? Right. I feel like if you they, can't build chemistry here. It's feet right? up. <laughs> right. That's it's just it. Oh, you won it all, and now it's like just relax. Right. Oh, we're just gonna show up and win. <laughs> right. Maybe they'll just roll over for us. Yeah. No. It's unbelievable. Weird. What we, we had 
four times. They need I a think? more experienced manager, I think, that could lead. That yeah. could be. Yeah. Well, he's, championship he's, pedigree. He's type. clearly a postseason guy, right? I mean, Boach knows his way around. Right. When it, when the the stakes were at the highest. Now, when the stakes were at the lowest, where, do you where get? was he? <laughs> no. Where was he? Huh? No, he's not checking in. Sitting every day. on a resin chair outside the dugout behind a screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not worried about the spring training record. Were you concerned? Hey, is Wash a manager again? Yes. Yeah. Where is he? <laughs> he's in, he's in oh, Anaheim. From, oh, Anaheim. Yeah. yeah, in the division, baby. Man, that's so great. It's great for him, but it's going to suck for us the first time we see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. The feelings will be When he's will windmilling be raw. Mike Trout around <laughs> yeah. third or whatever. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Get the last <laughs> of a heater before he has to wave somebody home. Do you think he will turn that around? In Anaheim. Was the key getting rid of Otani and bringing in Watt? <laughs> was that the key to the Angels' big turnaround? Probably, yeah. I just want good things for Wash. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, Anaheim is the right place, you know, the L.A. scene is the right place for, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of a toot head? <laughs> oh, toot head. <laughs> he did it one time, remember? That's right. He had anxiety. Yeah. That's I, I always do that. Right, I, I asked my doctor for that. We'll get hyped up. I'm like, all right, what can things. I do to calm down? Should, uh, <laughs> during the whole trial, you should yeah. be like, oh my god, <laughs> you <laughs> forgot about the just geeked out. <laughs> get a brief recess, your honor. <laughs> yeah, I have a medical condition. <laughs> yeah. So, what is your schedule? Jared says he's filling in for you for ten games. Yeah, and we're like, why? Mm-hmm. This guy, you just came off of four months vacation. You haven't done a damn thing in four months, <laughs> yeah. and then you need a two-week <laughs> vacation in the middle of the season. <laughs> I, you know what? Here's, here's the truth. When I showed up, that was the initial bargain that they 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 offered. I didn't ask. Mm-hmm. They offered. They said, "I would have said, take ten, get, take, take 10 I want to work, and I'll do those for free." Yeah, because I'm so into baseball. <laughs> right. Right, you would have, probably right. would have, and that's fair. That's why you are <laughs> you in a bus <laughs> for six hundred ninety, crackling for money. Right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's a thing that the, the teams have gotten into over the years. It's really it's they the, always they've always done it here. It's they've Gen done it for they a while. Have, it's Gen Z. It's the whole softness of this generation. They have. They've done it for a while. Yeah. Uh, I, I, even this year, I, I, I told them they kept calling like. What games are you going to take off? I don't, I don't know. Do you go ten in a row? I, I, the first couple of times I did, because uh, I never really had a summer vacation. I had younger kids, and so I was like, "Geez, yeah, we'll take ten days right around the All Star break, and it would be a two week time out." It was kind of cool, but um, anymore, I don't do that. Uh, I just, I just pick a couple of games here and there. Okay, I, I don't. I, I really, I don't. I don't like it. I don't like. As an example, missing tonight's game, and but when it happens in the regular season, right? It's game forty-four, and you're in Anaheim, and it's Friday, and it's Apple's coming in to do the game. It's just disruptive. I, I, I so I like getting the day off, but you got to. But watch I hate the game. missing the game. You kind of got to. You still, yeah, exactly. You still watch the game to what's going on. Yeah, right. so it's not really a vacation because right. you can't come back and not know what happened in the last. Two weeks. Right, and then you don't watch it. You don't watch it the same way as you would watch it if you were working it. So something will happen, and invariably your partner will remember a detail from the game. Yeah, but you remember the the ball that was hit over this? Not really. <laughs> I mean, I think I I think I wrote it down on my scorebook, but no, I that I didn't take particular note. Of that ground ball, right? Because then, what's his face to this? You know, oh, jeez. So yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a big fan of missing the games. Do you, but sc- you, you score the game? Better. Oh yeah, I'll score. I'll score tonight's game as an example. Okay. Yeah. But even as you're calling it? Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Does everybody yeah. do that? Does that help you remember because you've written it down or something? No, I mean it's just um, you refer back to stuff constantly. Uh, and then other games. And you have your own um, little shorthand. Yeah, you there. have your own little shorthand. It's, okay. There's a lot of similarities, but, but yeah, everybody's a little bit different. Um, yeah, I think everybody does. There are very few, even the analysts, but a lot of analysts will just do like the Even the sheet. lowly analysts. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of the way the yeah. tone they, they gave off. Well, play-by-play guys, it's, it's a must. It's almost impossible, I, I would think, to do the job without doing it. Uh, the analysts 
you could get away with not doing it. But most of them do. And at, at the very least, they'll do that game and just have it in front of them. And then they might trash it right afterward. Um, but very, very few just show up and don't. And I, I don't... It's interesting. Like, maybe that just started because there's a lot of time down. You're like, well, I'm just sitting yeah, here. You know, maybe right. I better write something down. I don't know. Do you have a tablet now, or do you... I do, yeah. I, I do it on my iPad. Okay. Yeah. So you save so them all. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so now you can roll back. I have, like, on my iPad right now, I have, I think, six or seven seasons of every game, spring training, regular season. And so you just... You have a question or something? Oh, in 2017? Yeah, I, I can search real wow. quick. You better back that thing up. I know, and I don't do that. I don't I do not do that stuff. It doesn't back up to the cloud and you, you can trust pull that it up on your computer? With China <laughs> and everything? I don't want them having my and data. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Have our BABIP or ex-WOBA? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> hey, in the wrong hands. <laughs> yeah, out there scraping my data? No, thank you. No, I don't like the cloud. I don't do much in the cloud. How is the? Because uh, I have a uh, Dave Raymond <laughs> does it. anti cloud. I'll yell at a cloud. Yeah, yeah. But I'll be damned if I'll back something up in a cloud. Okay. We got sued by a cloud. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we don't like the cloud either, man. They're mean. Um, tell us about some new rules this year. New like, rules. Some some stuff I've seen on the Twitter is uh, people uh, upset about the blocking second base rule. It's a little. A little goofy. It's just kind of like yeah. that is already a rule, <laughs> correct? But they are now enforcing it harder, right? Like, do you remember that year? I don't know. Every year, or different sports will do this, but they'll say, "Hey, this has been a rule, and we have never really enforced it, and yeah. we're now going." They call to. it a point of emphasis. I think That's they did exactly it one right. year with like balls and strikes, and everything real up was, you know, for for a month or so, everybody was bitching right. about it. But so, the NBA does this every year too. Just it's, try to reemphasize. Yeah. Is that what's going on after the All Star break? They're now emphasizing a certain rule that yeah, and scoring's down. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, new rules. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is that blocking? Are they actually emphasizing this? So that is it. It's a point of emphasis this year. We just had a call on this again yesterday um, with Major League Baseball. And they're like, yeah, it's just it, the rule has been around forever. Yada yada yada. But it's it's a point of emphasis. We got to start calling it. We got to start enforcing it. And in spring training, they did it a couple times, and it was just dumb. Like, it happened to Seager. It was really dumb. He wasn't trying to impede anybody's progress. There was plenty of room to get into the bag, the whole thing. But technically, as you interpret that rule, yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, he was in the wrong. So they rang him up on it. Well, on the call yesterday, they, they said, really what we're trying to do is crack down on the egregious stuff. Because this, this has become a bit of an issue, right? Pick off over to first, and the first baseman just throws his knee right down in front of the base. So his lower leg is it. So you just slide into his lower leg. Oh, gotcha. Um, so they're over that. They're like, this is dumb. And they do it at second base on occasion. Guys had gotten pretty bad about it. And so there's, there are two arguments that they have. One is, well, we just don't want anybody to get hurt. We don't want guys coming in with their spikes, you know. And, oh, boy, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Okay. Really what they don't want is they don't want nonsense out there again, right, where people are sliding in, clearly safe, but never – couldn't get to the bag. I've always – I've wondered for the longest time when they used to do that. I was like, just get the fattest guy you can find. <laughs> have him sit down on first. No one can ever touch it. This is the <laughs> sumo wrestling yeah, goal. The goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just seal it off. <laughs> My 900-pound life, whatever, right? <laughs> you got no hitter TLC. every game. It's so dumb. <laughs> so, obviously, this is to prevent that. They, they, they're on to me. <laughs> I think the weird thing about this is that it's a bang-bang play sometimes, and it's a judgment call, and you can't review it. it so is, that's, yes, it's not reviewable, which is goofy. That's what's weird. I don't think I realize that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think umpires once we get into the season maybe they'll do a little thing here for a couple of weeks where they'll be tough guys and they'll really hold the line on this but then they'll back off and it'll be normal again and so if you do it and you do it obviously yeah they'll 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 call it but if it's incidental they'll let it go I, i'm i'm sure they will i hope they do if that's the stuff that drives me crazy when they tweak the rules is when they take a little bit of the judgment away from these umpires who are 
extremely good at what they do. And it's just, it's to the point now, I, I, they're, gonna have, they're going to run into a problem at some point getting people who want to become umpires. Mm. Why would you want to do that right now? Every single call is scrutinized on 4K high definition, super slow mo cameras from six different angles. You're a human in the heat of the moment trying to get it right, and they do what? 99% of the time. But then that one time where by a whisker somebody tags Simeon's middle finger of his batting glove <laughs> sticking out of his back pocket, and he was like, oh, oh, yeah, there it is. Like, I, I, I don't want to be under that kind of scrutiny. I don't want to be held to that kind of a standard. I, I just think it's stupid. And I do think that these guys have the, you know, it's just like you got to have a little feel. You know what's happening in a game. You know the temperature, the, uh, the guys in the battle. And a play we had a couple a couple years ago had a play ended it on a slide at second base and they uh, they they invoked some stupid double play rule at the time holding the bag or whatever intent of the slide and it changed the game and it was so dumb because everybody on the field understood exactly what was going on and it was just normal baseball plays that have been for 120 years but no oh, you know by the most technical interpretation of this rule uh, we've got a violation here so let's redo it it's just dumb let, let the guys who are on the field adjudicate it the way it's supposed to be done it's a separate topic but I feel like this is a problem that is going to touch all sports the because the NBA the players will not stop talking about how bad yeah. the officiating is this year and it really kind of is not great but they're bigger faster stronger and the court dimensions are still the same size yeah. and on top of that you have all the angles and the zoom in, and on top of that, gambling. Yeah. So now it's like I don't, I don't want to touch that. Yeah. If it's a bang bang call and I blow somebody's six leg parlay, I don't. Wanna, <laughs> it's not <laughs> right. It's, it's a different world now. I feel like the reason you would want that job though is you can't get fired, like Angel Hernandez. I think the only way you can get fired is if uh, you are working with the mob and, and admit <laughs> to. Uh, gambling on every game that you didn't ref. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I meant he went. He said umpires. So oh yeah, I, I, umpire. Yeah I, yeah, I feel like they have a really pretty strong union there. Yeah, which decent, but it's not as strong as it used to be, man. Really? Yeah, no. And they get a lot of pressure now coming down from Major League Baseball. It's just, I I don't know how desirable that gig is anymore. I, I think you get to go to a lot of baseball games. Yeah, <laughs> how many home games do you get as an umpire? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I guess right. Right. I don't. So yeah, I guess I never thought about that since it's a rotating crew. Yeah, you're just you're just on the road all the time. Wonder if they get two weeks off in the middle of the season. They do. They actually get a lot oh, of vacation. Okay. Damn, that <laughs> backfired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. <laughs> That's what the great Dave Raymond will do to you. Yeah. So I'm taking a couple of days, Dan. A couple of days here and there. Like we have a series in Seattle. Where the first two games of the series are taken by Apple and Fox, I think, Friday and Saturday. So then we do a Sunday game, and then we come home. And we're coming from L.A. It's a night game in L.A. on a Wednesday or something like that. And I was like, well, what the hell with it. I'm not going to do that game. I'll take Sunday? that one yeah. game off. I'll just go home from L.A. after that, after that night game. Okay. You know. So it does kind of clean up some of that stuff. How old are your kids? I don't know. I, I hardly ever see them. Oh, okay. No, are they two, high school. Age I, I have or? two in college, and one one is a sophomore in high school. So, okay. it's not it's not the same, right? It's not like it was even five years ago. Yeah, you don't have to be home. No. Yeah, they don't care. Are <laughs> they impressed by your so career? No. Okay. Yeah, that's no. that's. They have. No. Well, my kids really aren't now, but they used to never be impressed <laughs> either. <laughs> When it was a more impressive. His dad is, working above the garage again. His yeah. kids have taken to calling us unemployed. Yeah, that's not right. Mm-hmm. We know that's not right. Well, we kind they of are. Care. You're unless we're employed by six thousand people. That technically we are. Yeah, yeah. you are. You're, you're self-employed. Yeah. yeah, you're a business owner. I'm a small business owner. Yeah, <laughs> or a uh, a managing partner. Yeah, probably a managing partner. Yeah, yeah. This company yeah. is manager partner. <laughs> You happy uh, CJ's gone? Jeez, Fine. dude. Finally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, man. That sucks. But speaking of, be- speaking of home games, he told me, and maybe I bored you with this before, when he was interviewing, he called me and told me what was happening. And he said, you know, I sat down with my wife and I was looking at my career 
19 years minor leagues, major leagues as a player, you know, Japan, Korea, etc. And then 11 years broadcasting. In those 30 combined years working in baseball, he worked and had his primary residence in the same town one month in 30 years. Jeez. One So that's month. why he's doing that. Yeah. Going back home. So it's home for him, yeah. So are you making sure you're not going to do the Atlanta game? <laughs> Just so you don't have to run into him? No, I'm going, man. Be so I'm awkward. going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Who's your main guy now? So it is split pretty much, I was going to say down the middle, but that's hard to do when you have three. So it's thirds. Um, so it'll be David Murphy, roughly 50 games. Uh, Dave Valley, roughly 50 games. And Mike Bassick, right in that neighborhood of 50 games. Okay. Do you think Dave Valley sounds like Joe Rogan? Look for it. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, there's there's a little bit of a resemblance, too. Yeah. Just a ball. Where's Dave from? Uh, he's from New York originally. Okay. Yeah. Well, the first time I ever heard him on a call, I was really confused <laughs> as to what Rogan was doing calling a moonshot from Adolis. God, now I'm going to have to dial that one in. Yeah. You'll hear All right, it I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah. Did you guys, you and CJ used to hang out? I mean, it sounded sound like you were friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you'd hang out off the... Yeah, so we, I mean, we knew each other before we, either of us got this job. Uh, we used to work together in New York, and when we were working for Major League Baseball. I'd gotten fired from Houston, ended up at MLB... Dot com fired yeah what for or unrenewed or whatever oh, okay you know, yeah no it's just that new ownership change when jim crane came in it just blew everybody out i'm okay. not a fan so, of his i'm not either between no one else but just between us <laughs> yeah right uh, I hope you didn't have a okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's not he's not my flavor but uh so yeah they got rid of all of us so i was in new york working for major league baseball and cj was as well and it was early in his time, and we. So I was doing some show, and they told me one day they're like, "Oh, we're gonna have the, uh, CJ Nikowski is gonna come on with you, whatever Thursday or something." I said, oh, okay. So I called around some guys I knew who played with him, stuff. Brad Osmus, and Brad told me this great story when they were playing together. CJ got really pissed at something. He was in Detroit, and he had rough inning, <laughs> and the last out at long last occurs at first base he's covering they flip him the ball he touches first and then he turns and there's his fans just giving him all kinds of crap out in left field and so he fires it out to left field at him out of anger right like, <laughs> but it lands on the warning track <laughs> i was gonna say hey that's a long throw couldn't get it all the way there and then, so there's, the, we, we found some video. You don't see him throwing it, but you see a shot of the opposite dugout, the opposing team's dugout, and they're on their rail like this, leaning, and you see them all fall the ball, and then just laugh as they go break. <laughs> it's the greatest. Uh, so I brought that up in the first, like, 40 seconds of our interview, and he handled it like CJ would handle it, right? Just, like, doesn't skip a beat. He's all over it, making fun of himself. I'm like, this guy's the best. And uh, so when I got the job here, they were looking for somebody to do some games, and I, I mentioned CJ. And oh, you helped him get the job. I did, yeah. Okay. Yep. And what did he do? Turn around, stab me <laughs> in the back. Left yeah. Atlanta. So. Well, I know you've is. spoken highly of Jared as well, so. Ooh, yeah, watch out for that. Cause God, he's, that's right. He's the <laughs> one filling wanna... in for you, right, for the 10 games. Ooh, yeah. 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 A two brute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be is careful that what's going that. on? You think he's coming to get me? I think we have talked about this before because I was talking about Bassick if yeah. he's if he's actually doing a game while the Mavs are playing if, if he's going <laughs> yeah. to be able to handle it. Yeah. I think I think he'll be great. I think I mean we're going to find out. <laughs> we're definitely going to find out. Oh boy. You know, playoffs are coming. Here. I mean that's the thing. Playoffs. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Or I think in fact when you were on last somebody yelled at me on email cuz I never finished that story. Wasn't it that? Yeah. Do you recall that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I started started talking about when Bassick was pitching for Washington, and his pitching coach actually told him, "You can use this in a game, perhaps." Uh, that his pitching coach, like he told his pitching, his pitching coach wouldn't put him in the game, okay. like they didn't want him to get up to warm up because he was so locked into a Mavs playoff game. It was like Mavs Sacramento or something. I don't they, know. They, so they did. He that? was a he was a pitcher, yeah. but they all knew 
Don't put. Don't, even don't bother. warm up Bassett. Don't even bother. We're using the other lefty tonight. You know, he's a mess. Only yeah, only yeah. in the most extreme circumstances. They basically had a twenty-four man roster that night because Bassick because <laughs> Peja was raining three. Was just his mentally, he was not going to be able to be in the game. Yeah. Like he'd be on the mound thinking about the Mavs. <laughs> like he really, I know, loves the Mavs. I know. Yeah. But uh, he, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really loves he really loves his Rangers too. Oh I yeah, mean, he's that's the thing about Mike. There's not a lot of gray area. He's no, all. Right? I mean, I think when he was on the ticket, they used to make fun of him for just not having any knowledge of anything outside of sport. Yeah, like he does not know any pop culture. He doesn't know. You won't be able to joke with him about a TV show, like because all oh. he is, he's hardcore into sports. He is pretty. Yeah, I'm gonna have to test that though. That's yeah. interesting. I've only I will, worked with him once, but yeah. I will watch that. I yeah. will watch for that. We will play the audio. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because I have a feeling how it's going to go. If no kidding. So if I make a, a reference to The Office or yeah. to Seinfeld. Or and then what is he, not, probably early 40s? So you could if go that some, even, is he that old? Yeah, I guess he's definitely he's older than Everybody right? seems yeah, to be getting older now. He's definitely a few well, years older than I am. Yeah, okay. So you could pick something late. He's 46. Oh, okay. <laughs> you are old. Yeah, that's what I keep forgetting. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, pick something like late 80s. Let's see how it goes. How long you been Early here? Early 90s. Drop a news radio reference yeah. on him. See, see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe Carlo. I love Phil Hartman. And Carlo that. from Cheers. I don't know. <laughs> see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I guess, I, I, guess I, won't, I won't do that. I have to come up with sports stuff. <laughs> how long you been here? Not oh, the bus. I got one fifteen. No, it's a, um, Texas. Texas. Texas strong. Yeah, my first year full time here was twenty seventeen. Pretty sure. Okay. This is year eight. So you full-time. don't care about Wash. No, I care about Wash. I, lo- I love Wash. You don't have dreams, but I don't have the same. I, I didn't spend the same kind of time you guys did. But when I was with Houston and we'd play interleague games uh, against the Rangers, that was. I mean, I looked forward to it so much just for my wash time. Because for some reason, managers do this cool thing, man. They take they take legitimate time for radio broadcasters. N- not always for the TV guys. Oh, really? But yes, but team radio guys, they, I don't know, they'll just, you come on in, close the door. And so you go in, you close the door, and the next thing you know, wash is just beating you down with F-bombs and this... <laughs> That one guy that, and that one guy this. <laughs> it's the greatest. It is the greatest baseball conversation because you realize immediately, uh, I'm not getting coach speak. Yeah. You know, he's giving me the real poop. And, uh, is he smoking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's ripping heaters. And it's, <laughs> it's fantastic, man. Have you ever heard this? Uh, the speech, the leaked locker room speech from the World Series? No. I think it might have been. Was It, it was, had to have been the Cardinals because... Yeah, somebody recorded it. I think it was before Game 7 when they had blown Game 6. Yeah, you should find that because he's in there. He's like, they're out there asking me about carp, Matt Carpenter. Like, they're, asking, they're asking me about carp. I tell them, motherfuck carp. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, you just, like you say in the f bomb. he just throwing yeah. F-bombs at the locker room the whole time. And I'm like, I would like to run through a wall for this man right now. Yeah. And that must have propelled them to a victory then. <laughs> Here's cynical Dan. That if <laughs> should I buy Dan? Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm just a, a logical guy. Yeah. That didn't. Obviously, that speech must not have been good. Then maybe he shouldn't have sworn so much. Yeah, that's probably that what could it was. Be. Yeah, probably what it was. That could be. Well, Isn't it something though? Like, don't you? Josh don't you Hamilton feel like was uh, offended. <laughs> it's possible. It's tricky though. The f bomb, right? Or the overswear, because lose impact. Well, it can, right? If you're a guy who, you know, I don't know, there's a big game, and so now you're going to be all fired up and run that nonsense out there. It, it may not feel authentic, mm-hmm. but that's the thing with Watch. It's like you you knew when he started down that road. It's like, okay. now like, we've This just, is real We've wash. removed yeah. all the BS veneer, and now we're getting the real Watch. And that's, all, that's just how he speaks, and you know that's how he speaks. And so you know it's real. Um, there are other guys who do it, and you're like, okay, thanks for the show. That was impressive. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm moving on. We've definitely all had coaches of both type. Yeah. Did anyone else fire you? 
or did you move on on your own accord from everywhere else? No, oh, yeah, those were all uh, on the baseball side. Uh, yeah, those were all just moves. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got fired from the Olive Garden many years ago. <laughs> yeah. For eating breadsticks. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> Imagine that. It's unlimited, I thought. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. <laughs> so did I. Like he's got a breadstick tree out the back. There's, you know, <laughs> there's a huge drawer, right? One of those big metal drawers full of, it, it must be 50 to 100 breadsticks in there. Seems not if, unreasonable. If that, they could just see you now. That a guy might just take one. And eat it. Yeah. Yeah, if you got fired, though, you were taking 12. Yeah, I was going to say, they don't fire you for one. Could you, could you eat it all in like, one bite? Yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty, that was pretty <laughs> good. You could stuff that in there pretty. <laughs> but yeah, Blake, maybe that, uh, maybe so that is sort of like uh, what happened. <laughs> well, <I'm> just... <laughs> and maybe I was a little gluttonous. I was hungry. You're in the Olive Garden. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't work there. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I, 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 what's this guy doing back here? <laughs> that job sucked too. Really? Oh, it's a terrible job. Your worst job? Yeah, probably. That was probably the worst. What'd You're you wait- do? What were you? Just a waiter. Oh. So it's like How that salad. Right? It was a bottomless salad and unlimited breadsticks for like mm-hmm. two bucks. Hell yeah! People come I'm in. Very and familiar. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you are too. There's no way you didn't enjoy that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not so much of a salad guy, but any place that works with uh, that has an unlimited or endless option, the waiters are hating that. Yeah. Okay, because all you do you're just shuttling back and forth, and they don't. What they and no one there gonna, takes it seriously. No, the, the 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 customer like whatever. Here's seven dollars for my six dollar and thirty cent meal. Yeah, so I mean. 10% wise, you're not exactly <laughs> raking for the fact that you had to make seven <laughs> trips to that table. It's the worst. So, um, you can't talk about this with Basic. What is uh, Dave Raymond watching these days? Do you watch stuff like on the plane? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you get, I save stuff. Catch through. Like, so I don't watch as much stuff during the off season. Roll through series. Because I'm like, oh, I'm excited. I want to watch that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Give us some wrecks. Well, it's short for uh, recommendation. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, so I've been saving the golf stuff from Netflix full season two, full swing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm ready to fire that up. Um, I haven't heard anything about that. I've heard it's really good. Oh, really? Yeah. Season we one should. was good. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like I didn't hear buzz about season two, but go ahead. If Jake yeah. did. No, I know it, it dropped. In Jake's that, in golf right. circles. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you golf? I do. Okay, so as much as possible. Yeah. Bring the sticks on the road. I like to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I Blake's do do a that. masher. He's a masher. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. He'll just. Nah. He's a power hitter. <laughs> yeah. I no, put it he, down there, but then I'll chili dip it and five putt. Oh I mean, yeah, that, that part sucks. Hate that. Scoring across the green. Yeah, I'm yeah. horrible. Yeah. yeah, but he'll he'll hit a uh, 300 <laughs> yard uh, hole. You'll you put it on the green in one. You want me on your scramble team? But right, you don't, wanna, yeah, you don't okay. play with me, no. Okay. I'd play with you. Okay, well. Then we should go golfing, too. Um, that's that's, <laughs> there's no way he means that. <laughs> what? Let's go. Let's go. He means the first part. <laughs> um, no one's paying attention to you, Dave. Hey, you know that you know that show? Well, you don't know the show, probably. I bet you haven't seen this show, and I don't know if you'll like it. It's something like... Seinfeld. Somebody Somewhere... It's on Max, HBO Max. Is it Everything, Everywhere, All at Once? No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. This is this is a series, and it's in Kansas. It's in Manhattan, Kansas, and it's uh, it's just the life of these people in Kansas. And sounds, sounds it's, riveting. It's it's a reality I, show. No, no, <laughs> it's kidding. a it's a whatever. It's a scripted show. Yeah, or whatever. very high, hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Somebody, wow. somebody? Roddy T's gave it a hundred. Yeah. No one says Roddy T. <laughs> I do now. That's awesome. <laughs> Somebody uh, somewhere. No, I yeah. need recommendations. Yeah. I'd be interested in what you think of that one. It's definitely, here's the thing. It's different than other shows you watch or have watched. I love that they call it Max now, too, so everybody can say, you know, HBO. Yeah. yeah. I, what, the worst rebrand of all time. Yeah. yeah, that's terrible. You fly with the team, don't you? Yes. Yeah, we were just sharing our war stories about how they'll fly through storms and. <laughs> yeah, right. They don't mess around. No, 
yeah, the scariest it, moment of me and Jake's life. Yeah. Well, who? Stars playing. Oh. I thought we were dead. Really? Where were you? Where were you going? God, dead we, were coming, we were coming home, but I don't remember where. It was. Shh. Maybe in Montreal. It might have been Montreal, yeah, the last leg of the trip. But f- flying through a thunderstorm, yeah, and yeah. we're out of our seat, and the players are dicking around like nothing's mm-hmm. wrong. I might have held <laughs> I might have held Blake. <laughs> it was dramatic. Yeah. yeah. Like, stuff flying everywhere, and I guess yeah. they're just used to it. But like that, he turned to me. He's like, I've always fucking hated you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thought we were crashing. Commercial, <laughs> a commercial flight would have not would not have taken off. No. Yeah. You know. I'm they're like, all right, we got a schedule. Let's get back to it. God, there was one we were landing. It's a long time ago now, but we were landing in a bad storm. And it was like, I don't know what the winds were, the crosswinds or whatever. Side, what, what do you call that? Whatever. Starboard Looking winds. At me. <laughs> it's like, it was, I mean, it must have been 70 miles an hour or something. And that plane was working so hard. And you just, you just feel it buffeting against that wind. And so what happened, what I didn't realize was, in those conditions, like, they just gun it harder. So as you're coming into land, it's like you can hear the, 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 the jet engines. just going, it's just squealing, uh. and it's like it is fighting through that as hard as it can. And so then you hit that, that tarmac going, you're like <laughs> like a rock skipping across the lake. Uh, oh, it just, Oof. that was rough. Like, that I always Chicago. wonder if those pilots are better than regular commercial pilots. Like, oh, you know yeah. how the stewardesses are hotter? Yeah. On the Stars flight or whatever? Care to comment? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on a Stars flight. <laughs> 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 but, like, do they go a little above and beyond? Right, the pay, food's better. You oh, my know, gosh, I don't, yeah. I can't so have... So, a pilot... You know. Yeah, I can't have all these this multi million dollar yeah. you know Dave Raymond contract uh, going down in flames. <laughs> Has he been so. in a dog fight? Yeah. Ooh, you the know? pilot. Yeah. 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 God, well, that'd be cool. Has like, he buzzed the tower? Yeah, not just uh, like. Is that still a thing? What dog fighting? Dog fights. I, I mean, does anybody shoot? Like, no, you know why? From plane to plane. Uh, because we have robots do it. Now. <laughs> we have drones. Just. Yeah, it's robots up there fighting each other. Some kid. And, a base in Topeka, Kansas, on his fourth monster, <laughs> energy of the day, just I mean, <laughs> just nuking villages and other uh, other robots. So maybe that's what we're headed toward is like a, just a matchup at the arcade one day. Send your three best video game nerds. Yeah, we'll send ours. We'll just roll a quarter. Do, war. <laughs> Let's do war that way. <laughs> That's, that maybe that's what we should do. We're sending Ninja. Who's the best? Uh, <coughs> no, Ninja's Ninja's name? Ninja. 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 I think that's the last. Come on, dude. Guy I've heard of, and that was probably ten years yeah, yeah, ago. Yeah, me too. He's old news. <laughs> Ninja. You, know, you know why he's not good anymore? It's because he's twenty nine. <laughs> yeah, he's, like Ninja's, that's too old. Ninja's yes. basically oh, yeah. John Madden in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember his era? Well, now he just calls games. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. Sorry, who who should? What's my reference for today? Yeah, who's the top gamer that all the kids would know? PewDiePie? No, probably he just does dumb videos. Um, eh? Doctor Disrespect is pretty popular. Okay, I like that. Doctor Disrespect? Yeah, that is He's, that goes hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Doctor Disrespect. <laughs> he knows all the cheat codes. What well, are you gonna do during the game? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, where do you sit and stuff? I'm actually today. I'm I. My wife is coming, and we're gonna have we're gonna sit in seats. Really? Like real fans. I did that last year for one of the World Series games, and I promised myself that I would never do it again. <laughs> and here I am, the very next game that I go to in this ballpark, I'm going to sit in the stands in a seat. Dress like that? Yeah. Plebes. Yeah. Where's your Ranger jersey? You're the only guy on this bus without one. Ranger. You don't even own one, do you? What do you mean a Ranger jersey? You yeah. realize I don't play. What do you I mean, neither does Luddy. Yeah, yeah, but you're a fan. Yeah, I don't either. Hey, Look at me. Yeah, well, I'm going to work. Do they give you stuff? They give you pullovers and stuff? No. Oh. No, not really. Give me a suitcase. You get a discount. Okay, at that's the cool. You yeah. get a suitcase? Get a suitcase, and I do get a discount. <laughs> do you get a clothing budget? No, no clothing budget either. Thank oh, you. Oh, man. Yeah, I need to take some notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> clothing budget. <laughs> yeah. And what was it, what was the other stuff I should be getting? Uh, Wednesday's off. So that means you're already yeah. here. The wife is just showing yeah. up later. Yeah, I should, that's cool. For get the to leave separately. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. 
think that's awesome. Yeah, and you just don't have to. You don't want to bring sand to the beach. I mean, we're here at the bus. <laughs> we're at the bang bus, bro. Yeah. Yeah, she'd be pretty. She'd be pretty jealous right now. If she knew. You can get some Jello shot. You might as well do it. Yeah. yeah no, working. I've got. I've got a little Jello shot here. I, be careful what. Be careful. Beer bong. I will not do a beer bong. They're, they they named him uh, El Bongi and Jose LeChuck. <laughs> You don't even have to go climb. Yeah, you can just do it from yeah, down here. Yeah, they pour it up there. Yeah. Well, how come I haven't seen anybody? They're oh, behind you, dude. Oh, I see. It. I see. Oh, yeah. yeah they have Rain a karaoke class machine. it up for us. Yeah, karaoke. Up there, if you want to sing a, a tune before. In fact, we'll we'll authorize you turning it on if Dave Raymond will sing a song. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> you ever done karaoke? Yeah, I've done karaoke. Not on top of a school bus. <laughs> and I mean, everybody's done karaoke, right? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. Oh, that, that was I never. I have. Yeah, of course. You've never done but karaoke? But I think I came up in the the heyday of karaoke. Probably so. What if the whole Was bigger maybe 20, 30 years ago, don't you think? Yeah. Kind of depends. On the roof. Kind of depends. Maybe for you, but like for Shinsu Chu, it's... It's big now. It's big, baby. Really? Yeah. 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 Now it's been a couple of years, but now if you're if you're karaoke gonna, very popular in Asia. Yeah. If you're gonna kick it with Chew, you're doing some karaoke tonight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he loves it. You know, he moved into my neighborhood. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, he bought. Oh, look at that. Hmm. He bought two Probably. houses, uh, yeah. tore them down, and made one giant house. Dang. And that's one you bought. And then where does he live now? <laughs> We're unemployed. No, it was, it was just such big <laughs> big buzz when he was moving into the neighborhood. Yeah. Like Chew. And my wife, all she knows is his name is Chew. That's the last ranger she can name is Chew. Chew. Yeah. People, people in the neighborhood, though, have had a chance to bump into him, get to know him a little bit. Like, he's delightful, right? Everybody loves him. Uh, I don't know about that. I think he stays in his compound. Oh. <laughs> From what out. I understand, it's karaoke twenty three hours. <laughs> yeah, this, you can always hear it from a couple streets over. Yeah, head up there. What's your song of choice if you are going to karaoke? I mean, you don't have a go to. I don't have a go to. It's okay. The heyday for me is past. Because I used to do it with my when I did high school play by play. My partner always loved karaoke. He was the son of the uh, owner of the station, and his go to was Brandy. So we knew we had to go, <laughs> had to go with Chris Wharf to karaoke and for Brandy and listen to him do Brandy. <laughs> what was your? <laughs> thank you. I've, uh, yeah, we're good, man. I'll transport him over there if you need me to. But, yeah. What What was your go to? Oh, I think I just had a variety. You know, probably a pretty versatile. Song. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throw anything at me. Maybe some Young MC. He will do Young MC <laughs> yeah. on you. Yeah, yeah. it's that's tracks. <laughs> So elsewhere in today and Twitter, I was giving him today and Twitter before you got here. Yeah. So we're kind of this is just a continuous. I'm starving. Oh, you want a break? Well, let's do this and then. It was just a couple of quick hits. Uh, I have a sports one and a and a political one. I have I'm I'm gonna do them both. What order do you want? I know the sports one, so I'm excited about this. Cool. Okay. Well, we'll end with that then because okay. I know it's good. The political one comes from Sports Mayor. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you know I'll Sports do, Mayor? I, I don't. I don't think so. Sports Mayor is uh, Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson. Okay. Who loves tweeting about sports? We don't really know what else he does. Right. But he'll tweet about how he switches parties. He, yeah, he does we do know that. He does that. That he want you know, hey, the second baseball team downtown. Why not? Hey, second. Loves a loves a sports bet. That's the yeah, thing. Is, loves yeah, sports he bets. Made a bet with Arizona. Made a bet. Sure, with, but yeah. they're weak. Like 15, sure. 20 He'll years ago with when, when Mayors did this. for SMU, TCU. Yeah. yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah, it, 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 he's that just a out? dork. You know? <laughs> All he tweets about is sports. Loves sports. And this sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, well, today, he says on Twitter, I unveiled the flag of Kharkiv, oh. Ukraine, in Dallas City Hall's flag room. Kharkiv Mayor Igor Terakov and I Agreed to display each other's flags after signing a friendship agreement last month. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds super it's gay. The most generic, hollow sentiment and statement you can possibly make. Dallas continues to stand with Ukraine, and there he is. 
picture of Sports Mayor with his hat and the, the Ukraine hat flag. I'm kind of hung up on the flag room. They yeah. Have, they have a room of just flags. And what did they unveil in Ukraine? Flags. America? <laughs> they probably already had one. Yeah. Is, Dallas there, is there a Dallas flag that they're flying in Ukraine right now? That's right. With pride? Because he's friends with Sports Mayor. We signed a friendship agreement. That literally sounds like something that my daughter says when she comes home from school. <laughs> yes, and was it a yes, no, maybe agreement? Me, me Where do you Anna think, uh, what, whose tax dollars did he use to mail that flag to Ukraine? <laughs> Ours. Yeah. Hard-earned tax dollars. Oh. God, he sucks so bad. He really does. Um, <laughs> and... <sighs> The last thing on today in Twitter is, have you guys seen the video and then the picture that's floating around? Many pictures of Caleb Williams at the basketball game the other day. I have. Was this? Was he at March Madness? I don't and know where he was. No, I think it was, wasn't it a USC women's game? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I'm not that impressed at his courtside seats. Uh, I think you you probably could have got him for the men's team also. (laughs) He is Caleb Williams. Yeah, he's the number one pick. Uh, The big controversy here, Dave, is um, one, maybe just the way he's kind of flowing to the music. That's that's one that could be controversial. It depends. But then he's waving around his pink iPhone. Huh. um, That are accentuated by his... uh, his pink fingernails, pink fingernail polish that he has on as well. And so there's uh, yeah, and a lot a, of draft nicks. Or it, you have to add this to the whole, uh, I think it was the Utah game that they lost, where, you know, everybody was memeing him for going over and oh, yeah, yeah, crying yeah. with his mom, and she's covering him up. But I don't know, man. The guy can ball. And I think really he's kind of the first Gen Z quarterback that's going to go at the top of the draft. And so people are like, what is this? This is weird. Well, meet one of those kids. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> They're weird. <laughs> to us, you know, this is a different generation. Like, the TikTok generation. They're just different. I don't know. I, I I had blue hair, you know, at some point. I had bright red hair at some point. I probably had black fingernails at some point. And Jake has said this before. Like, there's no irony anymore. No, like, exactly. Could, I don't... He's not, trying not to, he's not trying to do a bid. He's not trying That's, to make a statement. It's just everything, irony is completely gone. He's just like, I don't know, I think this looks cool. So the one thing on him that would have been brought up when I was growing up that is he totally ignored now is the earring. The earring? Yeah, he has we, an earring. That is, we're so far past that. Do you, do you feel like, do you remember that? Oh, my gosh, yeah, that was a... What yeah. ear? Left ear. <laughs> I think that left means ear. you're gay. Mm-hmm. And I never really knew, was it left or right? I don't know. I just That's thought, why I never pierced my ears I'll to be I'll just safe. avoid it. <laughs> yeah. I certainly can't have somebody think yeah. I'm gay. <laughs> Bonds, I remember when Bonds had his... He had like a cross his, dangle, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm not even being subtle about it. This is I'm hanging across off my left ear. Whoa. And I was like, whoa. What does that mean? What's going on? Yeah, I don't. I mean, it, obviously the problem is, is he's going to be in a locker room with guys who are 30 to 35. Or like, what? Are, who is this guy? Like, this is weird. But eventually he'll have a bunch of other Gen Z teammates. Yeah. On the Bears. Yeah. On the Bears. What was controversial about the, the movement, the dancing? The I can't remember what song it was, but it was definitely kind of a uh, – it was kind of a flowy, like slow. If like, you're doing that with the pink iPhone and pink nails, it looked like it. Uh, Dance from a yeah, you guys, you guys generation, you're like. It could have been a little. <laughs> didn't, what's on top of that cookie? Sprinkles, fruity no. pebbles. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you could have called you, fruity pebbles. Might have been. <laughs> What comes to your mind? <laughs> that was impressive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So anyway. Well, thanks, well, Dave, Dave. I Raymond. know you got to go. Wrong you got a long day of work over here. Why do you got to be over there at two thirty? What are you doing over there? Well, I'm going to go over and uh, just leave the, the crowd clubhouse and, and you know chat with guys and kind of walk over to the national guys and give a tip or two. To anybody feeling <laughs> a little loopy <laughs> today? <laughs> Maybe ask yeah. Simeon how he's feeling. How's his swing doing? Yeah. 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 To see what's happening, man. Just hang out. See, somebody might say something. You might see something. And if yeah. you see something, 
then what do you that's do? where it all say comes from. Yeah, it's, it all comes yeah. from Major League yeah. Baseball announcers uh, inventing. <laughs> do you never, do you recon. never know, man. Something <laughs> yeah. might come up. Oh, can I tell you one thing though? Before we go, I know you got to eat, but anything for you, Dave Raymond. Opening day, right? Happy opening day. Uh, happy opening day to you. You guys are obviously here I wish you happy opening you day on, on text. You did, which was it was kind of emotional for me <laughs> getting that. Because I know that you feel strongly about it. Yes. You weren't just goofing. So I love opening day. Everybody loves opening day. Last time I was on your show, we ended with my oh, that's right. struggles Closing with remark. the baluster. Closing remarks yeah. from Dave Raymond. And I was having trouble with Big Baluster and fixing my... <laughs> Which my, is the, my a piece of wood which yeah. uh, goes from the on ground, your stair- spindle. Yeah. a spindle yeah. on your staircase. Yeah. So it's a hell of a challenge if you've broken one or three. And uh, so we put the call out, and we got a lot of people who yeah. reached out. Now, most of them, for one reason or another, couldn't work out. They couldn't help. Uh, their lathe wasn't big enough to accommodate the length of wood, whatever. Well, there's this one guy, Jordan Inge who reached out and we got to communicating a little bit and he wanted to try it and so we he did he did an incredible job he had never done anything like it before but he had a lathe he's got a workshop this guy's an unbelievable artist uh with wood uh he does these beautiful bamboo fly rods all sorts of stuff he has this cherry wood floor in his house that he did on his own just piece by he, amazing amazing guy um Anyway, one of the first times I'd met him was hanging out over at his place with him. We were talking about baseball, and he has some scars. Like he, he'd been hurt by baseball, by the Rangers in particular, by Nelly. <laughs> yeah. like he, so we got talking about baseball. I was like, wow, he's really working through some stuff here. And he hadn't been to a game in a long time. Kind of had lost interest in the game. Jeez, it's, it's kind of a shame, right? But... What are you going to do? We get to the end of the process. We're trying to figure out how to even the score a little bit since he'd done all this great work for me. And he's like, you know, when we talked at first, you mentioned maybe tickets or something, opening day, something like that, right? I said, yeah, yeah. I said, but I didn't want to revisit that because I think I, I, I don't want yeah, to hurt know more you, now. you know. He's like, yeah, man, I, I, it, it was a lot. And I, as I was talking to you that day, I realized, like, I, I wanted to try and stop myself. Like, what am I doing? I'm talking like this about baseball to this guy. And um, he's like, and I, he was almost unaware that he had the feelings that he had, but it was like cathartic. And so he's kind of over it. And he is interested in getting back to baseball and stuff. And so he wanted opening date. So he's coming tonight. Hey. And he's bringing his dad. And I would say about opening night, right? You don't always remember the details of the game or whatever. But there will be a lot of folks who remember hanging out here today at the bus. They'll be you know, might, looking might around. Not. Might not. <laughs> Some are going to have They'll a little, a little, little, little more trouble here. than others. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you, you look around and you see people cooking out or whatever here. They're all tailgating, having a good time. They'll remember a lot of these details. They won't remember the game, but they'll remember, they'll remember opening day, being with their family or friends, the weather, just the excitement, the anticipation of the season. For guys like Dan and me, who grew up in the Midwest, upper Midwest, where the weather was always shitty. Um, it was it was a signal that, dead gummit, good weather spring might has, not be here today, but yeah. it's it's coming. Um, it was always such a big big day, and so I'm really happy for Jordan and his dad. I think it's going to be great, and I just I hope they, uh, you know, have one of those really memorable days and stuff. And, I, and and knowing Jordan the way I do now, like he is, it's going to be a really special day for him. Uh, but I know it will be for a lot of other people, too, of course, when they unfurl that banner. Are you guys coming to the game? No, unfortunately. Absolutely. Blake is. Just be honest. <laughs> Blake on. is. Why are you that way? What do you mean? <laughs> like, you know, why, 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 why do you do that? You don't know if I'm going <laughs> to not be there. You take a tender moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's. I'm trying to. I'm trying to support right, you. Dan, Just say absolutely. Is everything a joke go, to you, no, Dan? Absolutely not. <laughs> anyway. It's because uh, you mock it. Yeah. So it's. um. That's it's a awesome. special day, and, um, and and I have to thank you guys and just everybody. So you got the everybody. barrister. Yes. Yeah, look, it's all in, painted. It looks great. Like, you would never. It's the best-looking baluster. You got my, a, a baluster, not a barrister. Yeah. Baluster. Yeah. Jordan has the opening day tickets. Yeah. Uh, his dad's going to get to spend a day with his kid. Yep. Oh, I've got to the dumb zone. Yeah. All because of. Yes. 
and I've got a new friend. I mean, he's, he's the greatest guy. And, I, and I, I told Blake this a while ago. I meant to circle back on this. But you guys really should have him on. Fascinating guy. Fascinating life. Uh, just the, the, the artist's life. You know, and and the path you take and things that happen—it's just—it's wild. Maybe we'll get really the two of you together someday. Yeah, yeah. Since he's your <laughs> your boyfriend now. Okay. Again. <laughs> Again. Since you love him. It was really nice. Out to hey. us. Hey. Jake, you know, it's always great to see you, Jake. Yeah, you Dave too, Dave. Dave. Blake. <laughs> Dave, Thank you. Dave, 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 <laughs> Y'all not working like a team. I got, I got to shut the studio down, yo. <laughs> I, all right, the only way I open the studio up now, y'all got to walk uptown to the Bronx and get breast milk from a Cambodian immigrant. <laughs> I only drink the finest breast milks. <laughs> Go out there and milk a Cambodian. One hundred percent Cambodian, yeah. It's the real shit. Rest me, you made my day. You're listening to the Dumb Zone. No, me. We are recording live to tape today from a bus. Opening day. Rangers opening day. Your prediction, Blake. For today or the whole season? Jake. Uh, All right. I 90, agree. 90 wins, uh, 22 to 3 tonight. Cubs. 22. Oh, my. <laughs> oh. A lot of, lot of complacency. Yep. When you win a World Series. I forgot to do this earlier, but we've had a lot of things going on. Hey everybody, it's time to I want to do this because we got a bunch of birthdays. And you know how it is. Sure. This one I missed it the other day because of uh, email. Huh. 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 It was Hotmail. Huh. It was Hotmail. Hmm. My name is Kiffer Gregor. Oh, Greg Wire. I believe... It says then in parentheses, Greg Wire. Yeah, I think you have the names backward, but sure. What do you mean? Look. Kiffer. Go ahead. <laughs> He's 31. Long ago when I lived in Chicago, I waited in line at some place for Jake, Bob, and Killer. Do you know who he is? Yeah. Au Cheval. Au Cheval. Leaders are Jake, Dan, and Joe calling random NFL players gay. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Hope to make it to Dallas for a visit to the uh, Dragon Den from Kiffer, Greg Wire. Yeah, great dude. He definitely did. I mean, it felt like the most ridiculous uh, exertion of our power ever. It's like one of the top known burger places in America, and they're open until, you know, midnight. And uh, it was like a three-hour wait. <laughs> he said he lived across the street. So. Just to eat a burger, it's a three-hour wait? Yeah. And so he uh, he stood in line for us. I kind of remembered. So we landed, yeah. and you guys went there like late night. Mm-hmm. We ended I, up eating at like bed. 12.30, and it, it absolutely lives up to it. It's an incredible burger. Great place. Um, probably not worth a three-hour wait. They got a Boca burger? They do not have no no Beyond or anything. <laughs> uh, another kid. belated one. I hope this reaches you and the guys. As it is coming from an inferior email service. My name is Preston. Saturday was my Brian Cardinal birthday. Day 19, subby 4296. Jake, you might remember me. Ooh, coming in hot today. As the other guy in the Luka Slovenia jersey at fight night a few years back. I remember there was there was a guy. Why, did you have one too? Yes, I have several. I have Real, two Slovenias, four Mavs. My leaders are Jake's four fig cat, <laughs> the video guy laughing in the background, and the guy that paid for the transcript. Can I tell you a little cat story real quick, even though I know we're somewhat short on time? 
You've got all the time in the world. So as you know, because we were talking, I took the cat to the vet yesterday. Um, rabies shot, <clears throat> which initially you would do like in your first trip, but the breed are very specific. Oh, that's right. Your vet was mad that yeah. you said, I can't do that now. Yeah, so I, I went back to the, the whatever six-month checkup and the rabies shot. And uh, come in, they weigh her, or weigh him. That's important. Um, and then the, the vet comes in, and uh, she's checking – uh, the, the cat up. Cat is a male, and she didn't really flip all the way back in the paperwork. So she's looking at the paperwork. She's like, "Okay, we're gonna do rabies today," um, and she's feeling Binks up, and she's looking like at his backside, and she calls the tech over. She's like, "Vanessa, come look at this," and she lifts the tail up, and they look at me and they go, "You got a little girl," and I'm like. What do you mean? Like, it's pregnant or it's... Uh, what, what do you mean? They were like, this is a girl. What? And I'm like, no. I mean, we get the breeder. The breeder's very thorough. We got it from a breeder. And they were like, there's no testicles here. And I called the wife and I'm like, hey, just making sure. Like, he's been... I was like, he's been neutered. They were like, he's way too young. There's no way. Plus, I feel a vulva. <laughs> and I called the wife and she's like, yeah, he's neutered. And she flips a little bit further back in the paperwork. There's the breeder paperwork, and it has male neutered marked on it. And she's like, I guess. She's like, I can't believe these breeders that they would neuter a cat that young. I've never seen a cat neutered this young before, but I guess. And I'm like, what about the vulva? And she's like, I must be feeling something else. So for about three minutes, I thought Binks was a female <laughs> cat. It was the weirdest experience. That's the lady's like, you have, a, you have a little girl on your hands here. I'm like, you're not very good at your job. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, we might need a new vet. Yeah. First, the attitude they gave you towards uh Well, they gave me attitude this time, too. Like, she started petting the cat. She's like, I can't believe they did that to you at such a young age. And I'm like, well, listen, if this cat breeds with something else, that cat is going to be deformed. How does she know what a vulva feels like? Well, that she should, you know. She's a doc. She's a vet. But it was really a weird experience. They were both very sure. So, anyways. And I, you know what happened uh, next is I, I thought, like I often do, I'm going to make one joke. And I was like, <laughs> I guess I have a trans cat. <laughs> and that did not land. Didn't go over? Oh, my god. She gosh. was already mad. <laughs> it's in the news. Yeah, I thought. I mean, what's I more th- topical? I thought that was, I thought, you know. <laughs> It did not did not hit at all. Uh, <laughs> that's from Preston McDonald. That's a very I bet that guy has a butler. Oh, well, he's got a Lucas Slovenia jersey. Yep. Now on to today's birthdays. My finance is obsessed with the show and listens every day. His name is Trevor. Day two DF nine seventy. His birthday is today. He's been trying to convince me to have a six ninety remote at the wedding. <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> so if he actually gets a birthday shout out, I will make room in the budget. Maybe from Abby. I'll yeah. definitely do a wedding. Yeah, for sure. That would be a lot of fun. I'll drag something out of there though. Warning. No, no doubt. Let me get that bridal party. Warning. So as long as you're comfortable with you know with somebody uh you know hooking up a couple with- of us on the prowl. I'd like to. Uh, okay, I hope this is a different Trevor because now it's. I hope I want to wish my husband Trevor day two DF. Same. A happy thirty fifth birthday. What if one is a husband, but he's you got a couple on the. He's engaged with the other one. Yep. His leaders are TC, Jake, and Monty. Please tell him hell yeah. He'll know what special way I'll wake him up from Erica Moffitt. P.S. More Blake book recommendations. <laughs> yeah, of course the wife wants a book rec from Blake. Yeah, what was the last one? Gone Girl was really good. Magpie Murders was great. Um, man, I'm having a trip. The, what are the, you problem, the problem with reading on a Kindle is I don't know what the book is called anymore. That reminds me. i got to do my Belichick book report. I'm kind of like that I'll with finish. songs. People ask me, like, that artist, what's, his, what's your favorite album? I'm like, I don't really remember. Yeah. Kind of all that's there on the magic machine. Day three, dumb F here. Wish my sister-in-law happy birthday, Carrie Loinette. 
She's a big Dumb Zone, Dumb Zone fan. Her birthday was on Business Wednesday. She was hoping for a 690 sit-in for her birthday. I chose the pro bono option instead. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being her favorite non-comedy, non-geofence podcast in the DFW Metroplex. <laughs> Hosted by two former employees of a mega conglomerate that has also has a producer out of Wiley. Okay. Um, <laughs> he says, congrats on the success. I would have been a day one dumb F, but I was holding out for the year subscription early on. No excuses from Josh. How's it going, man? And finally. Uh, sure. Go for it. This is my last uh, thing is finally I have Dear Heroes. Per your curiosity of Jim Knox's whereabouts, he's now with the Houston Sabercats of Major League Rugby. Okay. Still comically doing his standard crowd shtick at the home games. From DF number 943. So that's today's... Hey, look, it's Mike Adams. It's former Texas Ranger Mike Adams. <laughs> okay. Well, let's welcome him to the... <laughs> we could just hold on the news and... Well, he could join the news. <laughs> How's it going, man? We're going to do Not some news bad. and stuff. Hey, former Texas Ranger reliever Mike Adams. How's it going, man? Pretty sweet. What are you doing here? Hanging out. Yeah? Tailgating, enjoying it. I mean, I've, I've uh, hung out with this group for the past three or four years, I think, something like that, three to five years. It's Where do you live? In Keller. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm local now. Yeah, one of the guys was telling us that, like, he just reached out to you on Twitter one day and said, hey, you should stop by our tailgate. And lo and behold, you did. Yeah. He's like, epic. why? <laughs> you know, it, it, it kind of gave me <laughs> the bus. Yeah, I had to, I had to make some new uh, new baseball friends, some people to hang out with that uh, will go to the game. Okay. Me. It's a pretty sweet bus. Yeah, man. I, I uh, actually rode in it last year. Uh from Keller here, and then the ride back was a completely different ride, man. It was uh, a <laughs> – Okay, like, nice – yeah. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't say – he, he rode with me last year, and I was like, I probably can't bring him back on the way back next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is your son? This is my son, Do yeah. you trust the bus? Like, is it a little shaky? You know what, man? I, originally, I was kind of like this – so they hadn't drove it, from what I understand, last year. They hadn't drove it since – the, the previous, previous opening year. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So we went a whole year without being driven. And all of a sudden, I mean, it kicked right up, though. I mean, <laughs> hell. If it, as, yeah. As long as it kicks right up, that's that's positive. All right. Let's talk Cowboys free agency. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a big Cowboy fan? Yes. Unfortunately. I'm like a, a – yeah. I'm, I've been a season ticket holder for – since 09. Do you have like a Cowboy room at your house? No, not no more. So when I was when I was playing in Philly, I lived in up in Jersey for the, the two and a half years that I was there. Cause my daughter had just started school, so you know I'm over there in Eagle Country, and uh, so I yeah in, in my basement I had a kind of themed Cowboys just for uh, so, so the friends that I met over there that were big Eagles fans, just so they could see my pride. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a rough off season. Yeah. What off season? Well, what off season exactly? Right. Yeah. yeah. He left for a couple weeks to uh, see his daughter in France, and he came back. He's like, what happened? I'm like, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. nothing. I don't have to update you on anything. Isn't there Cowboy News today? What did I have today? Is he setting up a joke? No, no, no. There's actually yeah. Cowboy News. Okay. Oh. Did you guys not see this yesterday? I, saw, I heard something about C.D. Lamb, but I don't know. Uh, where's my Cowboy stuff for today? Hey, Here we go. What was Wash like? <laughs> what was Wash like? He he was awesome, man. I mean, he was he made it fun. He uh, uh, you know he held the players accountable just on their own. You know, he didn't he never had to step in. He never had to you know get on anybody. He had two rules: be on time, play hard. Um, you know, he let the he let the clubhouse be be how it was. Did you ever smoke one of his cigarettes? No. You ever, you ever bum one? Oh, no, I probably inhaled enough to <laughs> smoke one, but no, I never bummed one of his cigarettes. <laughs> I think that was the, my favorite story that Derek Holland told us is you Darvish got into his cigarettes one game, you hit him or something. Him and probably, Scott you, Feldman. You probably smoked them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you find your cowboy note? It was just that uh, the Ian Rappaport tweet. Did you see that? I can't. He blocked me. Oh. <laughs> the Cowboys and quarterback Dak Prescott have a mutual understanding of his contract situation. 
With no offers from Dallas, despite him being in a contract year, owner yeah. Jerry Jones said, we are where we are, locked and loaded for this year. No indication a deal is coming. He'll be a free agent. Now, is this coming from, because you always have to check, is this coming from the Cowboys or coming from Dak's camp? It's probably both. Like, who wants this out there? This is the first time I've ever to considered, like, what if he just doesn't want to be here? Why wouldn't you want to be here? I mean, yeah. Mike Adams stayed in, in, in the <laughs> Metroplex. Yeah. You, I, did, I don't know. Yeah, he has. To, I mean, he he wants to be here. I think so, uh, he, but he's I mean, not, he's no he's not a bigger name anywhere else. No, but he's his name. I think if but you he's start with the very, Cowboys, it's very hard here for on him. Yes, that's part of the deal. Yes, but that's part of the whole Cowboy quarterback thing. But how often do these guys actually hit real like, their contract? I mean, he's got some dummy years on the end of his contract, but how often does that happen? This is the real last year? I thought next year was the last year. No, this is his actual. He, I think he still has voidable money. Yeah, yeah there's year. like 40. Yeah, he but, still has money on the contract. So he plays year. out this year. He still costs the Cowboys $40 yes. million next year. Yes. Uh, I don't know about it's, 40. Yeah, it, it goes down if he's not here, but they owe him but money. he's going to be like 20 or something. Like and that. he could sign somewhere else. Mm. That yep. doesn't happen that often. Do you ever get one of those cool contracts like that? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> I did, yeah, I wish I would have. Baseball's got great contracts, though. Baseball has great contracts, especially now. I mean, they are just getting absolutely handed money. Yeah, it's crazy. So even you are saying, "Man, these days," and you just so it's stopped a playing. big difference. It, it's a big. If I was playing nowadays, I'd be making a whole ton of money. But you know, economics and it is what it is. Yeah, I. I, I, I I remember saying that. Then I remember somebody telling me, "Well, be glad you played when you played." You know, meeting an older person and you know just the whole how they just keep in- increasing. When you, was your last year? Fourteen. Okay, that's not that long ago. Well, I guess it is now, huh? Ten years. It is now. Ten years. Yeah. That's a big difference. You wish you would have, you would have pitched in a dome here. It would have been a lot nicer weather-wise. That the ballpark, the old ballpark, was great. Yeah. It was a beautiful ballpark. It was so damn hot. Right. So damn hot. But this place is unbelievable. I went really? Into, I, yeah. Th- I, you don't like this place? Well, I mean, I, I just like loved it. the old place. It just doesn't feel like a baseball stadium. It is what it is. I mean. I mean, it's cool being 70 degrees. But we don't have to play in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit different. But also, you don't have to sweat your ass off no more to go to a game. That's and, true. They probably have much out. better attendance in the summer. Oh, they, they have ever way more. Before. Imagine yeah. how they're – I mean, well, it doesn't matter if – if they play at the old ballpark and the new ballpark right now, when you're a winner, you're, they're going to show up. Yeah. You know, but, but yes, when it's not going as great, it's easier to go to the games. We can can Dak of, win it all? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did oh, Dak, you played with Chris Young. Yeah, in San Diego. Yeah, I was trying to look at who you've played with. Yep. I think his generic question was, can Dak win it all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's Scott Hairston like? I hope so. <laughs> Scott Harrison, that's Harry, that's my dude. Harry was your dude? Mm-hmm. Our kids are pretty, pretty equal in age. Well, his sons and my daughter, pretty equal in age. And uh, they were always watching, uh, in the in the kids' room, they're always watching uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Oh. That's big in my household. Is I'm there, so is glad. Is it still a big thing now? Yes. but I'm, Yeah. It's a great day whenever they move beyond that. And you never have to hear dude, the song again. I would. Yeah, hot dog, hot, hot dog, dog, hot diggity <laughs> dog. <laughs> so that was me. That was mine and Scott's. De- Scott's thing was, hey, it's a hot dog day, man. It's a hot dog day. <laughs> That's awesome. Your kids play baseball. My son does. Yes. Okay, you forcing them into it? Yeah. Yeah. I told him, hey, if you ain't good, then you gotta Pitching? sleep outside. Pitcher? Uh, he uh, he pitches. He pitches. He's not a, a you know. How old is he? He looks like he's at a weird 13. age. Like he doesn't remember you as a player. Yeah, no, he, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, he was. So he had no respect. He was probably for like you. three or four when I came out. Okay, three. I think. So your kids don't have respect. They got to watch a video to see. Yeah, well, he's like, what he, do you do? He's, he's seen video. Uh-huh. He, he'll go he'll go back and watch it every now and then. Um. Yeah, I mean, one day he'll truly, truly know who or. What I did, you hope. I hope. Exactly. What's Scott Posednik like? <laughs> Stop just. <crying. laughs> Scotty Paz lives here in uh, in Keller or in Colleyville, something like that. Really? Yeah. It seems like a hotbed for people to There's just stay. There's a lot stay of athletes here. After There's a lot of athletes here. Regardless, oh, look, he of played with Ben Grieve. Yep. He was a different dude. Arlington Martin, right? Yeah. Go on. I mean, just a quiet kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wanted you to tell me some weird stuff. Oh no 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 no. no. <laughs> 
Some ditty stuff? Or what are you yeah, looking for? Yeah, I don't know. You know it's ditty like, stuff. We're just fishing. <laughs> we're on a fishing expedition here. We talk a lot about uh, those, the, like the 2010, 2011, when you got here in 2011. Him asking you about Wash. This The team they have now is obviously dominant championship, but Simeon and Seeger are kind of like robotic in a way about the way they handle their business. Yeah. But those teams from a decade, decade and a half ago were just insane. <laughs> it just seemed like it almost seemed like a movie. There were so many personalities involved from Wash on down. <laughs> yes, yeah. Wash. Yeah. You had you you, Wash, and then Napoli. You had, yeah, and Elvis. Yeah, that was Beltre. so fun, man. It was a fun team, man. I I wasn't used to it when I came over here because I came from San Diego, and I, and when I came into the, into San Diego, Hoff, uh, uh, Trevor Hoffman was there. So everything was kind of, you know, a little more serious. It was still the older generation, I guess, kind of bringing you up. Um, so I, I, I kind of came up in a very serious scenario, I guess. So when I came here, it was kind of like, what the what the hell? <laughs> you know, everybody's like dancing and part not not literally, but I mean, it was just like a man. It, it was it was a different. baseball party. Yeah, yes, it was. They were having fun. It was a good time. Yeah, we. Could I wasn't feel used it. to that, man. I came from San Diego where we didn't win much. Yeah, yeah. Were you? Uh, so I'm looking at how you got here. Trade deadline. Yeah. So you're a big uh, trying to get that arm to get him into the playoffs. Yeah. Did it work? Oh yeah, it did. Of course. Uh, we got it almost done. Two at bats. <laughs> ever. Yeah. What was that like? It was cool. The first one was cool, and it was you know one of your dreams to, to bat in the big leagues. Was it scary? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. I mean, because I, I knew what they were going to do. They're going to pitch me away and try to get me to r- strike out or roll over. So, you know, I, I was just kind of, I knew what they were doing. So I'm, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to try to go oppo, try to go with it and try to shoot it over like second baseman or first baseman or kind of shoot it in the gap or something. And uh, I just rolled over and grounded out the second base. So you did actually. I made contact, yes. Yeah, and that's my, something. And in my second at bat, I was like, I, I really didn't want to do it the second time because I was like, man, I still got to go back out there and pitch. I don't want to be on the bases, you know, thinking I was going to get a hit. Was this a, <laughs> a little little ahead of yourself? <laughs> was there already like an eight-run eight game or something? Like why are they – No, it was, even... uh, it was probably a uh, – I think the first one was like a five- or six-run game, something yeah. like that. And then the second one, I think it was – I want to say it was a two- or three-run game, I think. But I, I had to come in in the seventh, I believe, to or a sixth, and then – they needed me to go back out for the seventh because that was at the time that was my role. Mm-hmm. So they're like, you know, we had a two or three run lead. They're like, all right, well, screw it. We'll just it, if there was runners in scoring situation, I was coming out. But if not, then they were gonna let me hit just yeah. so I can go back out there. But after that, I was like, I'm good. I don't need. I don't need to try to do this no more. So your second time, did you have like a mindset, or you just kind of like my second right, time? Let me I try was like, hit one out. Yeah, no, no. My second time, I was like, I'm. I'm not even going to swing. Get back on the mound. <laughs> stand there. Yeah. Get out of here and go back and, go back and pitch. And then I got two strikes on myself, and I was like, shit, I don't want to strike out. <laughs> yeah, you got to protect the Yeah, plate. I don't want to strike out. <laughs> Choke up a little bit. So I was like, you know what? Here we go. Boom, just ground ball. Like, all right, perfect. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so you make – how do you have a uh, an ops, it says, or your ops plus is negative 100. How does that happen? <laughs> you can even have that? How do you have that in baseball? Know. All right. Just tell them saver metrics are in the game. Yeah, yeah it kind of yeah. did, man. That must be a money ball thing. Yeah, I do remember the Adam Zogando Feliz. Like, just the back end, it just felt like we're just about to mow nine down here. It was just awesome. It was yeah, awesome. We had, we had a strong bullpen, man. It just wasn't strong enough. Oh, no. We got, <laughs> kind of got a far away look. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. That's obviously before. La- it's weird. We we've, we've been talking about this. How it's still weird to think that the Rangers are World Series champions right now. Like it came out of nowhere. Yes, it very much came out of like nowhere. Like your guys' team, if you had it wanted, was a build up and yeah. And, 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 yeah. Well, the the 2011 team was we were supposed to. The 2010 team team it was kind of like this, wasn't it? I mean, I wasn't as big at following the Rangers then, but. Wasn't it kind of just, oh, wow, they're in the World Series, right? It wasn't like... Yeah, the first yeah. time they were in the World yeah. Series was a big surprise. Yeah. yeah. But this one right here, I had no... I, I was like, okay, next year or this year, they'll be good. You know, they'll kind of figure out their bullpen and stuff like that, and they'll be they'll be fine. But, yeah, I mean, they just kind of pieced it together and, and got it to work and got hot and obviously got it done. What was Taylor Teagarden like? <laughs> 
he's a lo- <laughs> oh, he's Longhorn. He's a Longhorn, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. You're from Texas, aren't you? Yeah. Where from? South Texas, like right, right, right outside Corpus Christi and Sinton. Okay, Sinton. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a big town. <laughs> Maybe it is. No, yeah. it's a. It was. It's a. Uh, well, now it's a four A school. It's a, you know, fifty five hundred, six thousand people. It's not small. No, it's like the size of Keller High. Where'd you go to college? Texas A and M Kingsville, on a basketball scholarship. I played basketball my first two years of college, and then went back to baseball. You didn't oh, wow. play baseball the first? I guess you can. Yeah, I could have. You can? I could have. Yeah. I was, I, I was kind of the original plan. I was like, because I, I had a, I got a full ride to, for basketball, and then uh, they were like, if you want to play baseball, you can also. But baseball, basketball season ended to a spring break, and a bunch of my buddies were going to South Padre, so I was like. No, I'm not gonna play baseball. I'm gonna go to South Padre. <laughs> okay, so you grow I mean, up. I had to make life decisions, right? You grow there. up. You're like the best, probably the best athlete anybody's ever seen around there, right? Like, what? When did it? When did you ever play somewhere where you're like, oh my gosh, now this is? You know, they always say some guys have like a, a difficult time getting to the majors and adjusting to, you know. If you grow up and you're the best starting pitcher all the time, Big maybe fish. you're the best pass basketball player and all that, and then you go to kind of a smaller college, so I guess you're probably the best player there as well. I was the best baseball player there, but even even at the time, I wasn't I wasn't like super dominant or anything like that. I mean, I was good. I showed, uh, I guess, potential, um, but I wasn't. It, it really didn't come together until once I signed and started got in pro ball, and that's when I think it really. Well, I know for a fact because my numbers show that's when it really took off for me. Because that's Did you when get I realized. No. Oh mm-hmm. wow. Mm-hmm. Nope. That's quite a story then. Yeah. Yeah. You my, with- I have a yeah. I have a very different story. Okay. I mean, but we mean just how how it all happened. Okay. Yeah. How so? Well, I mean, came up as a basketball star. I was good at baseball, but it wasn't my love, so I was I was more interested in basketball. Chris Young, yeah, same thing, yeah. And then uh, go to go to college on a basketball scholarship. Don't play baseball for two years. Decide. Me and the coach kind of get into it. I'm like, I don't want to play here. He doesn't want me to play there. I'm gonna go transfer to a, another school in East Texas. Uh, a week before, I decide I'm not gonna go. Come back and play baseball. Play three years of baseball. Uh, second year of college, I guess I was player of the year, pitcher of the year, whatever. Um, Humble. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Player of the year. Second year. And then. <laughs> it's like whatever. So, yeah. so, that, so that second Pretty year, good. so that second year, they told me, hey, you know, I had Kansas City and somebody else on me. And they were like, hey, we're gonna draft you. You're gonna get drafted probably 15th, 20th round. All right, cool. Do you have like an agent and stuff? No. Okay. Uh, you couldn't do that back then. All right, that's right. I'm older. No NIL for you. No man. NIL. Uh, and then uh, don't get drafted. After the first day of the draft, they call me like, hey, you still want to stay in? I'm like, sure. You know, we'll see what happens. The second day comes by, nothing happens. Come back for – so I, I don't get drafted at all after my second year of college baseball. And then go back, which I wasn't really expecting to other than the fact that they told me they, they probably were. Um, going into it, I was like – Yeah, I'm like player of the year. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, yeah I'm I, thinking I, I'm going to get drafted. Yeah. And then uh, – well, I kind of thought I was, actually. Yeah. So going to my uh, third year of college, uh, you know, do well. Hey, we're going to draft you again. I'm like, y'all told me that last year or whatever. Never happened. Um, and then I had some pro- – draft goes, I don't get drafted. I had a couple of pri- private tryouts with uh, Toronto, Kansas City, and Milwaukee. And Toronto didn't want to give me a little bit of money. They want to give me like five grams. So I was like, I don't. I'm not gonna. I got another year of college. I, I can pitch him and see what happens that way. Uh, Milwaukee comes back and like, hey, we'll give you this. I'm like, shit. Maybe I'm not gonna get nowhere near what I think I'm gonna get. So I just took it, went in. And once I realized that, you know, I was able to get in there, they changed. Uh, I guess they, they taught me to work out and stuff. And then it all kind of came. Once I started working out, it all came together and took it seriously. I wasn't, because in college, I was just partying. Yeah. I would go party. And, and you were still good. Yeah. Okay. And, and 
Yeah, I, I, I'm a, I was a Friday night pitcher. Thursday night was college night. I did college night. <laughs> yeah. You know, I did college night. A lot of specials. Yes. Bars on those nights. Yeah. College, yeah. So I wouldn't go to class on Friday. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't go to class get, on Friday. I'd sleep until, the- sleep until we had to go to the field, man. <laughs> See, and that's what I always think about these dudes that, you know, the dudes that get paid at that age. Like, how do they, how do, they do it? Like, the, you uh, obviously got your, your head turned straight or whatever, but you had to get serious. If you hadn't done that, you would not. Oh, no, no chance. No chance. Made I, I really wish I would have, like, taken it serious in college and then see what would have happened. You know, what, where would I have been drafted or what would my potential have been yeah. if I would have taken it serious in college? Could have been player of the universe. Man. <laughs> <laughs> of of, of the, the multiverse. <laughs> It's so funny that you just end up hanging out with these dudes every year now. Yeah, yeah they're like, yeah, yeah no, we- it's come fun. It's it, it's fun, man. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, we, they have, we have a good time. You know, um, there's usually some good food too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's some barbecue out there. All right, well, I thank you for joining. We're gonna kind of finish our show. If you want to stay on, <laughs> then stay with us. If you, you want to go, go mingle, mingle, I'm gonna go. Wanna go I'm gonna go give me some grub, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah they got a good spread. And- Appreciate it, man. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, All right, sure, dude. That's, uh, Thanks for coming by. That's the great nice Mike you, Adams. <laughs> Former Ranger great. Current bus participant. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quite the day. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start uh, with the latest in uh, Sean Diddy Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy. Of course, we know they raided his multi-million dollar homes in Miami and Los Angeles earlier this week. And now people are looking for what they found. Um, and before we get to that real quick, what's his name? Uh, Prince Harry was added to the lawsuit of, uh, of one of the defendants in U.S. or in uh, the Southern District of New York. How's your uh, wife taking that news? You know, she's really, you know, she's not as into the current stuff. Mm, that's right. You've said yeah. That. She's really more into the old old uh, times of women being oppressed. I think she probably tops out at Diana. Okay. But she would talk about, she watched, the, I think it was The Crown to Diana. It might have been a Diana movie, and she's just like, you really have no idea how hard they, uh, they basically drove her insane. Like, yeah, you get, to, you get to live a sweet life and stuff. It's awesome. You're not going to have to work. But you can make a per- person crazy no matter how much money they have. And that's what they did. And that's kind of what they're doing to the old girl now. I mean, I participated in it. She's got cancer, and I'm like, is she in the Illuminati? <laughs> and I don't, even, I don't even care. What was the big rumor? She had a botched butt lift? I mean, the biggest one was that he had knocked up another chick. Oh. And that... Uh, you know, he was gonna. She was gonna keep it, and so she freaked out, and you know, took off. So yeah, uh, the other thing that you'll see online is everybody is dredging up old Diddy content, and these are not. This is not like it came out of nowhere. Um, is that why you dredged up that Chappelle thing? Yeah, I mean that obviously tells you that Dave Chappelle knew something was up at some point. But people have like these videos of him with Justin Bieber when he was thirteen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, dude. He's like, we're going wild out for the next forty-eight hours. You know, this is my, this is my, my brother, my son. And Beaver's like, <laughs> think they were doing a little something. I mean, I, would you be surprised? Think about like the Michael Jackson, Macaulay Culkin stories. Yeah. And then there was a video later. I, I saw a video where Justin Bieber was talking about Billie Eilish, and he's it, in present day, and he's like, you know, I just want to protect her. He's like, because I went through some shit in this industry when I was a kid because I didn't know what was going on. He's got like this real like prison looking stare on his face. Like, Oh man. God, that's strong. Really? I just, oh yeah, the smell. <laughs> You're good. I don't want to catch a contact though. <laughs> um, yeah, Billie Eilish, her parents are, or at least her mom, right? In show business, so I think she had some kind of Well, yeah, and I think Bieber's parents were like uh, hungry to be famous. Yeah. You know, but I think she lived at home for a long time. Like my kids' parents. Yeah. Hungry to be famous. Yeah. Or, yeah, just to be on a bus. Yeah. But, yeah, the stuff that, that you'll find now, it's all, I mean, it's everywhere. And people are, you know when T, TC the other day made a comment about, like, hey, I think he's actually, like, the music industry's Epstein. 
And I'm like, no, he's just a weirdo. He's just a guy with a lot of money whose sexual proclivities kept going further and further and further. I'm here to tell you now I think he's the music industry's Epstein. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Everybody and, uh, needs their own Epstein. I want to play a little audio, Blake, here. I thought you would enjoy this, Dan. I saw this clip of MSNBC talking about uh, talking about the Diddy case. And I think you'll understand. This is Joy Reid's show, the uh, social and political commentator, Torre. I think you'll know pretty quickly why I pulled this for you. And now this, this large, growing number of people who are alleging crazy stuff yes. about him. Yeah. And these are things that people in the industry have been hearing about It's giving time. R. Kelly, Torre. It's giving, it's, 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 it's disturbing. <laughs> you know... It's giving R. Kelly. That's right, yeah. yeah. No, that's the way to talk now. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way you talk. Yeah. Um, You're giving jealousy. And now it's time for some updates from a local small town. Oh, you want some Hood County breaking news? I do. <laughs> does it feel like a good day for it? <laughs> yes, it does. It's Rangers opening day. All right. Um, we don't really have a special open for that. Let's see. But I bet we can get one. We will. Let's head over to Facebook. Uh, all right. Uh, Betsy Taylor's got a meme. Oh, okay. That's my open. What's the meme? Scientists are saying that the sun will burn out in 7 billion years. That means TxDOT will have to finish road construction in the dark. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. They'll still be working. Yes, they'll still be. They're always slow. That's, uh, they're always construction. That's Betsy. Okay. Uh, Jen is a little more, more serious. She says, I'm going to leave this right here. Motorcycles are going to be coming back out for the summer. Please pay attention while driving. It's important. They're dangerous. You know, you, you barely touch one of them, and all of a sudden you got a fatality on your hands. And, yes, they've been in hibernation oh, in this. Be very careful with that. Be very yeah, watch the be very, very cord, cord, the wire. That is not ideal. Uh, oh. oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. Oh, you would think, you know, everybody else seemed to understand... Don't go through this way. That yeah. way, but it's women, so they feel as if they can do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, hashtag look and twice, save a life. But yes, that? the motorcycles are coming out of hibernation. Right. Um, out of the, off, as all the snow has melted. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Who did this? Okay, Julie Post. To whomever. We're getting a little loud in here, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we need to hurry it's okay. up. okay. We're pretty close right. to done. To whomever thinks it's okay to dump your trash on tin top road, shame on you. Yep. Yeah. Hoping that the perp sees it. Yeah, apparently trash on tin top road. Uh, hey, somebody lost their peacock on Temple Hall Highway. <laughs> uh, Ginger said someone needs to come get their damn peacock, and I'll be damned, there's a peacock in the middle of the highway. Yeah. You'll see that in small towns. Like people, small towns are the home of people who own wild stuff. I, there was a neighbor of mine that had a peacock uh, when I lived in Dallas, over by White Rock Lake. Aren't they? Guy just had a peacock. Pretty loud and annoying. That's kind of their. That's bit, what I've right? heard. Uh, I don't know. It was down around the corner, so I didn't hear it. Um, and let's end with this one. This one is weird. But my other neighbor had a goat, and that's loud and annoying. Yes. Yeah, very loud. Yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd hate to live next to Dirk, too. Uh, I just need to listen. Do we acknowledge that as a good joke? Oh, you weren't listening. Mm. All right, I'll say good. Thank you. The goat, the goat joke? Yeah. I don't even really want to. He's Yeah, never mind. <laughs> it okay. wasn't a throat goat joke. Okay. This comes from Anonymous. Okay, this is so bad they didn't, didn't even want to put their name out. I just need to state to the person that may live in or around Toller that dump your dead dog along Friendship Road with bloody blankets with it. I mean, that's horrible. Yeah, I don't think uh, you'd, you'd want. My 16-year-old son and I... I mean, ruining those blankets? Brought a shovel and dug a hole for it, but... Yeah, someone dumped their dead dog in, on the road and told her. People dump dogs out there, man. That's interesting that you would see that and then say, hey, let me go get a, a shovel. And beat it? To no, no. It he, he dug a hole for it and yeah. threw it in the hole. It's country, man. Yeah. They love their animals out there. All right, we should well, probably. Well, apparently not. Well, well somebody some. does. <laughs> some. 
So uh, right. we the should probably. I'm gonna. Oh, oh, what? Might. I had one more. And oh, so you did? Yeah. I gotta do this one for you real quick. Yeah. Abby Hensel has married Josh Bowling. Oh damn it! You knew? I've got it prepared. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it tomorrow. No, let's talk uh, Brittany and Abby getting married. Uh, Abby gets top billing. Right. Yeah, so... Uh, I saw the Today Show had reported on that. Yeah, Abby has actually been married for several years, but the public didn't know. She married this 34, or they're 34. She married this guy in 2021. And... <laughs> Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a photo. There's a photo of him in one wedding dress. It's a, it's a very listen. I'm being honest. This would be a very horrible existence, and the fact that they've been able to claw out happiness from it. They're is, both uh, teachers. Is inspired. Well, yeah. What do you think? One of them works on the docks. <laughs> While the other one's doing sixth grade math. <laughs> they kind of have to both be doing everything. However, that is my question. Can Britney be married? Well, this looks like a guy that would marry Britney and Abby. So that's what a it really, is that's, is that's about the worst insult you could get. They are conjoined, but the bottom half of the body is all one. <laughs> and the top half, Abby you controls wedding, one wedding arm. Photo? Yeah, I have. And Britney controls the other arm. <laughs> and they oh. each control their own head, obviously. So as far as self pleasure, you have to ask these questions. Your sister is actually doing it to you. Yeah. Well, but you both feel that. Yeah. You have two different brains. Do you think you have to be like, okay, now's just pretend that now's my time. When it's right arm, it's my time. You don't think about it. I know you're gonna feel it, but don't think about it. And then you'll get your turn, and I won't think about it. But what but if... Really, I it wonder, might just be double the O's. But is one know? of them a left-hander? I mean, it has to be. Yeah, I think your body can but, basically force you to... Okay, so she could. she's ambidextrous. They. They are ambidextrous. Do you think they're mad at, like, uh, uh, what's her name? The actress, actor, that was in Juno, that goes by that is a day now? Like, we're a they. <laughs> yeah, are you, you serious? You're not a they. Like, as the they There's thing. no one else in the world the can, thing. can claim a pronoun, pronoun like we thing. can. I got two heads. Like, I'm literally like, I a am they. they. Uh, from the today.com, according to pictures and videos on Bowling's Facebook page, the family enjoys nature hikes, ice cream, and snow tubing. Oh, I bet that's a... It, it should, yeah. I have a lot of questions, and I don't deserve an answer to them. It's their... You know, they share a bloodstream in all organs below the waist. Abby controls the right arm and leg. Brittany controls the left. Like, do they have sex? They yeah, they have to. How do you know? That's what you do when you get married. But if you're only married to Abby, <laughs> she, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. At some point, like, what if she wants to get married? So now they've got. No, they only have. Their mom, in a documentary, 2003 documentary called Joined for Life, Patty Clever. said her daughters were interested in having children one day. I don't, I, Quote, I, I, that's probably something that could work because those organs do work for them, said Patty. And so, boy, I'm saying the other, the other twin could get married. You're saying no? Why not? Why does one of them get to claim the idea that they can be married? I just think because they only have one thing down there. Well, I mean, can one of them only feel one wall? <laughs> and also, they, it would be really, I would think, dangerous almost because... Well, the one of them is just a Baylor virgin, right? <laughs> okay, that's how they pull it off. <laughs> I get the left in the front, you get the right in the back. <laughs> Dude... Think about, I mean, I'm not trying to be too graphic here, but think about the concept of, like, performing on someone if you're a female. <laughs> and there's just like... <laughs> just like <laughs> Is it a dude's dream? 
<laughs> is back like no because only one of them is in love with him I think they both have to be bought in no they don't they don't they do then not how's it gonna work they does do one not, wear like a sleep mask if the other one's doing yeah. it I think you have to they're definitely not both sucking the guy off I think they have to That's no they about? don't no they don't that's a bad I mean, is that cheating on there you go that's, that's what I'm saying they both have to be bought in no bought in they don't both have to suck the guy off they don't have it's, yeah but if this but if I had a I don't know she, I think Dan's you're right. already down there like I think you, you have to be mask. bought in to be down there you can't be like talked into that now it's the main I really <laughs> wish I had answers to these questions well, but they can't drive, right? Maybe uh, if our guest booker works on something, we can get answers. And book the guy? No, no. But he's like, I just want Brittany. <laughs> yeah, not Abby. <laughs> we got a pack show. All right, there's your new. All right. I already hit it. But... Mike and subscribe. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Birthday. All I'll tell you is today is the death anniversary of uh, Major League Baseball managing great Cum Posey. <laughs> remember Cumberland Posey? I remember him from birthdays, but that's yes, about we it. used to talk about him, but we never really said his name out loud on the air. That's a word I'd be interested in learning when that came about. The, the word c- cum. The c word, yeah. Yeah. And like when people decide to do a like funny spelling. <laughs> I mean, it, it can't be that old. As evidenced by the fact that Cumberland thought nothing of his nickname. Yeah, and, come. And come and go. Yeah. Still see come and goes everywhere. Um, You want to get some Letty closing remarks? Yeah, why don't you fire that on? We're done. You're done? So now you're done. Am I on? You are. No. I just want to say... Uh, How thank deep you. are you into the natural lights or whatever? We're uh, doing? Yeah, I'm, Keystone lights. I'm on that tipping point, so okay. things are going to get wild here pretty quick. You All got right. three hours until game time. You, I don't need anything from you. <laughs> <laughs> you amateur I've said softball, that, look I at me go. I can't tell you how many times I've said that exact same thing. <laughs> so, from uh, you, I don't need it. I do, I do want to throw some... Uh, <laughs> Compliments to Blake because he did do a lot. That's I know, I know he's he overpaid. Needs. The last thing, but he, he does do a lot, and he's also a marriage counselor. Like I think Jake was ready to jump on top. Dan was like, ah, "I got papers and bullshit or whatever." So yeah, no, but does. thank he you guys. Uh, oh, I, Jake was ready to broadcast upstairs. Oh yeah, he yeah. was yeah. all about it. Yeah, yeah. The wind, it's now a 1,000 degrees out there. 1,000. <laughs> 74. We have umbrellas. I hope you, you guys want to come up. We'll I do, think we'll you're do happy a big to group be here. photo. Is that cool? Of course. On the, on the roof? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys. You're welcome. Next year, we'll figure it out. We would uh, love to make this a tradition. Yeah. So hopefully 100%. we brought a little bit to the to the table. And yeah. uh, thank you guys so much. You brought much. a lot. Thank you, brother. Yeah. This is good times. Awesome. Adios, mofo.